welcome to Wild Beyond the Witch Light, session three. Thank you all so much for joining us on this chaotic, fantastical bi-weekly campaign that I'm honored to share the screen with all these lovely creators over here. Uh, thank you all so much for coming. We really appreciate it. We are going to have a fun, crazy-filled night over the next couple hours. I uh, cannot wait to dive into it because a lot of you have been just craving asking me like, is it Tuesday yet kind of DMs, which is always amazing to hear. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's been awesome. Uh, okay, so want to get into this super quick, but we got to do our due diligence here at the start of uh, today's stream because we have some really big news to share with you all that we announced on yesterday's stream of Beyond the Realms. And this has been a long time coming. It's been a goal of myself and Jordy Rose, co-creator of the channel since we started this goddamn thing almost three years ago now. Uh, Dice Cream Sandwich is officially sponsored, everybody. We gained our first brand uh, sponsorships, partnerships with two amazing companies uh, that they have been um, uh, such great partners and uh, love their stuff. Uh, recently got one of their wares recently and uh, yeah, so, sorry, I'm very excited. Um, so I'm going to go over the quick little spiel here uh, for all of you to enjoy. And uh, yeah, guys, so here we go. So this week, we are extremely excited to announce our very first set of sponsorships on the Dice Cream Twitch channel and social channels, starting with our first sponsor, uh, the amazing team over at Critical Kits. Uh, Critical Crit is a premier dice and accessories company that recently launched a Kickstarter campaign uh, for their brand new solo RPG experience, Be Like a Crow. And I said this before, and I'll say it again, Be Like a Crow. Uh, it is a solo RPG that allows you to put yourself in the eyes of a crow and explore the world around while journaling your experiences. You get to choose from four species, pick your setting from high fantasy, clockwork, corvid, and more, and you're ready to go. Uh, each session consists of up to four play modes that are a combination of randomly generated events and the choices you make in the setting. All you need is a rule book, pen and paper, and a deck of playing cards in your unbridled imagination, and you'll take flight in minutes. Their Kickstarter has blown through literally every stretch goal uh, since it launched, with nearly 1,500 backers to date, and you can still get in for the next couple days until the campaign closes this coming Monday, November 29th. And also, because we never got to do this before, uh, to celebrate that success, they're giving back to their fans and ours within the TTRPG community, giving you a chance to save on some of their incredible dice collections. And I'm going to tell you right now, they are really sick. They've got like an amazing hard edge collection of dice. They've got Witcher themed dice, like with Commander of Coins and stuff. It is legit. Uh, and they are going to uh, give us and you 15% off when you go over to criticalkit.co.uk. Uh, you can put in the promo code DICECREAM15 at checkout and save yourself 15% off of your first purchase, which is really good when it comes to dice buying. So, And eventually, we're going to get those dice into the hands of these awesome players. They've all picked out their favorite sets, and they'll be able to show you uh, very, very soon. So thank you, Crit Kit. You are amazing, and uh, we're actually generally super stoked to be able to collaborate you on this stuff and get some sweet goblin dice, baby. Um, and our second sponsor tonight is, of course, the incredible team over at C4 Labs, baby. Uh, you might have seen us hyping them up over the past week on stream and on our uh, Instagram TikToks. They uh, sent me this amazing, like amazing high quality uh, dice tray here that is literally the, I've said it before, and I keep saying this joke so someone tells me to stop, the Rolls Royce of dice rolling trays. <laughs> Uh, it is amazing, like high quality, made by hand, ebony and maple wood, uh, foam rolling tray top, uh, bottom. It is spectacular. Uh, and they uh, are the home of some of the most epic rolling trays, dice towers, and tabletop gaming accessories we've seen. And their Kickstarter for the Mastercraft Dice Tray Series is in full swing with only a, like a couple weeks left to go. Uh, each tray begins with the hand-selected woods shaped into 37 different parts with a huge amount of the work being done by hand. The pieces are fit together to let, uh, to let well over a dozen dice be stored along with minis. Then each one is finished with a vegan leather rolling surface and rubber feet, which I can attest to is something I wish I had with other dice trays. <laughs> uh, so a huge, huge thank you to C4 Labs 
for their support of the stream tonight. Uh, you can also check out their Kickstarter as well. All these links will be in uh, in the chat down there. Um, and we're also hopefully going to be working with them to make some really cool dice cream themed products with our logos on them. And also hopefully get some of those awesome uh, dice trays and towers over to our players, all of our players here on the Dice Cream Twitch channel. So more gifts coming at you, people. Uh, yeah, it's pretty awesome. I'm very, very stoked. Uh, so once again, Crit Kit, C4 Labs, thank you all so very much for sponsoring this episode. And anyone out there, if you love dice, you love high quality D&D accessories, go check out their Instagrams, go check out their websites. They make some amazing, amazing stuff. All right. Mm, we're gonna have to like get some Sam Regal like hilarious joke ad things going on here soon. I think <laughs> I can't keep going down that same line. We're gonna be more creative as it goes. Um, so uh, we are going to move on here uh, with a another glorious, splendid uh, recap video made by the one and only Boo Boo Wings herself, Jackie Elena Chan. Uh, and we're going to get you all caught up on episode two of Beyond the Witchlight, everyone. Enjoy. Last time on Wild Beyond the Witchlight. Who's ready for a good show? Come on, come on. Both of your feet start to leave the ground as you're suddenly just in the air. I think I have become a wizard. Oh, joy, 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 joy. Allow me to introduce myself to you both. My name is Mr. Light. Would you two mind being a part of our Witch Light Big Topics extravaganza? Ah, that's a wonderful question. With that going on, are the guards a little bit more distracted? All right, I'm a full send, no thoughts, head empty, kind of like crawl, go and try to like... So you kind of look out from this second flap and you see uh, beyond it a tangled wall of thorns. Oh, I'm gonna run then. That's a nat one. Moss, I'm stuck. Ah, that's a four. We're gonna have to roll initiative, everybody. <laughs> oh, those kids stepping on my toes, spitting on my costume. You're taking the hits today, girl. Moss is going down. <laughs> See this bugbear just bam, take a giant swing at Moss. Not my friend. What the bloody hell is going on around here? We've been sent to try and find Zabil now. Haven't spoken to them in quite some time. So you don't know where they are either? How about we work together as a team? How about this? You find a little Kenku friend, and we won't kick you out and ban you for life. I want to take the invisibility potion and down it. Come on, come on. That is fine. That is fine. We take those. That's a 23. Those nothing should get frustrated soon enough to be on her way. Well, I hope you're right. Trust me. It's all the worst. Don't worry. Bad things have been happening at the carnival for quite a while. Maybe one of these can help you do the days. My heart. I can't do this. <laughs> this is such a bipolar dice. I can't do this. And we are back. Now you're all caught up on episode two of Wild Beyond the Witch Lights. And with all that out of the way, everybody, let's kick back, relax, grab your favorite snacks, grab your favorite drinks, and let's get chaotic for tonight's session of Wild Beyond the Witch Light. Okay. So... Last we left off, the party having left the staff area of the uh, Witchlight Carnival after having a very awkward confrontational uh, talk with Mr. Witch and Mr. Light. Uh, not long before, Quincy had drank in that invisibility potion, ran into the trailer of Witch and Light, which they call their home, 
uh, rummaging around uh, in the trailer, Quincy, you were able to find the sort of hidden trunk, uh, sort of able to ca- uh, handle two hands. As you lifted it, you found a strange crown, golden crown inside, and also uh, underneath a sort of hidden compartment that contained three or so, uh, looked like three impressions that held various vials that were not there, uh, empty in fact. But you were able to sneak out of the trailer before Witch and Light could see you or make out your presence, uh, connecting back with your party, with Burley kind of leading them, escorting them outside back into the carnival. Uh, Burley had kind of stopped you all and said the following. Bad things have been happening at the carnival for a while. People and things have been going missing. My, my bosses know more than they're telling, but the hands are tied somehow. You're the first people I've met who might be able to send things right. Witch and Light are good guys, but you'll need to leverage to make them spill the beans. You'll need the leverage, and hopefully maybe these things can help you get the deed done. And, he, and when we left off... Burly, this massive bugbear with a jack-o'-lantern helmet and big jean overalls, was had his hands out with three vials inside the palm of his hands. And as he kind of takes, uh, puts this out, takes this out and shows you, says, I don't have long before I have to go and put this back. We can't take all of these. Uh, I mean, one would be suffice. I, I, all I know is that it was hidden in witches trailer it must be useful somehow um but we've got to be quick can i do an insight check or uh, arcana to look at the vials yeah go an arcana check okay uh arcana ah oh, that's a seven <laughs> <laughs> Seven. So unfortunately, uh, it's hard to tell. One of the each vial has a bit of a red coloration to it. Huh. Uh, the vial to the left, going to right, the one on the left has a single bead, red bead in it. No liquid at all. Almost like just a single little red bead of swirling liquid inside of it, as it kind of shakes and kind of ping, 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 kind of uh, bounces around the uh, the inside of the glass, and every so often you can see the bead go <laughs> almost like changing shape um, somehow. The one in the middle vial is thick and full to its fullest amount, like almost like at any moment it probably, if you took the cork up, it <laughs> spurred out and spray everywhere. You can kind of just looking at it, feel like the liquid is pressing up against the glass as hard as it possibly can with a bit of a swirling sort of mercury viscous to it and a little bit of glitter inside. The final uh, potion uh, beside it uh, has a different sort of hue to it. Um, has a it takes the form of a sparkling golden mist that moves and kind of swirls around like water. I am personally partial to the last one. I think that seems <gasps> personally. The, co- the burly agrees. Lucifer likes the fact that they're all red in color, but also likes how vivacious the first one is. The I mean, first, the first two are of a red hue, and the last one is more of a, of a good, like golden, sparkly hue. Burley, do you know what these do? I, I, I don't. Unfortunately, I just kind of snuck in there and took them before they could notice. Oh. Uh, are we gonna get in trouble? Must be useful in somehow. Well, what if we're quick and I can refill them and put them back with some other liquid? Okay. Usually nothing happens. I mean, maybe. I can... Or we could take all of them, and we could just take the blame because we were already back there, and you could be like, "All oh, those rotten people," and like chase us throughout the carnival. But well, I, don't, I don't want you to well, get don't, don't tell them that. Don't, know, don't, listen, don't, we, don't tell them that we, now. We on our side. Listen, don't tell got, them that now. We do one more thing. We are out of here, and I am yeah, not making it look, from the outside look, here. Look. I just got in from in there, and they are talking some weird things happening, and there's... What? Me- What'd they say, Quincy? There, There's some weird stuff happening here, hmm. and I don't know who to trust no more. Okay, so... Listen, which- I don't want to know Quincy to be so squarely, but I think even as someone who loves mischief, we should 
drop out help as much as possible in the best way possible, in the most honest way possible, and maybe not try to cover our asses anymore with falsities. Um, Eddie's not, like, not listening at all because he's too <laughs> obsessed with the far right one because uh, it's sparkling really nicely. Is he allowed to do an arcana check on it as well? Yes, Go ahead. Know better than me. <laughs> 16. I raised the DC because you did the check twice and you got one over than what it would be. <laughs> uh, looking at uh, the various liquids, um, sort of one kind of shrinking and expanding, this little bead of liquid kind of becoming bigger and a little bit smaller. The other one, the liquid looks like it's pressing against the glass and, and like has like a small crack in it. And like the small crack looks like it's like just barely widening ever so often. Um, the last one, this sort of, again, they're all kind of like thick, syrupy, mercury, viscous, uh, swirling inside, various glitter. Uh, you look at that potion and it does seem familiar to you. Uh, you've seen someone use this from your family before. It is a potion of advantage. Ooh. And it is exactly... <laughs> uh, potion of advantage. It pretty much does what it's what the, the description of it uh, describes. It gives you advantage. Uh, it gives you advantage oh. on any check, uh, whether it's an attack roll, ability check, uh, anything that does with a dice roll. Uh, it will give you advantage. Okay. Nice. How long? Uh, how long? Uh, it's um, about uh, an hour. Okay. Oh my gosh! Advantage on one ability check, attack roll, or saving throw of your choice. Oh, one ability check. Okay. Within the next hour. Oh, so like you got to ask these yeah. questions. I was like a full <laughs> hour of advantage. Let's go. Let's, let's copy this stuff. No, 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 no. We have had you that last Once time. you drink it, <laughs> you have the time limit is one hour, and in that hour, you gain advantage on one check. Yes. Oh, our choice, sense. our choice, or the very next one. Uh, whichever choice you deem you'd want to use it with, I believe. Let me see. Mm -hmm. Say if we drink it, and then like an hour's in time comes to the last hour, but of, of your of your choice. So okay. once you drink it within the hour, you decide which role you want advantage on. Okay. So Abby so knows what this is. Yes, it looks familiar to you. It looks like something that maybe someone you grew up with had used before. Um, to get a job done a bit more, you know, to okay. make them feel a bit more capable in what a task that they were doing. All right, so Abby, uh, meanwhile, I know everyone's having their own conversation. He like points his finger towards it, but not enough to touch the glass. It's like, I know you. I know you very well. <laughs> and then he's like- Burley just looking down the vials. You, you can talk to them? No, they're, they're, they're jars. Uh, uh, yes, of course. <laughs> <laughs> I know it. See, what is it, Abby? It makes things better every time. Everything you want is just better when you want to do something. Interesting. Better. Do you know what the other ones are? There's other ones? <laughs> There's three vials all together. Oh, no, I, I know. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> You're too good at this. <laughs> and, and well, that's what that's what he'll say. Like, no, there's there's three vials. <laughs> oh, and, what do these ones do? Can I, I like did, 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 like in that sense? Can Abby like see them with his ar current arcana roll, or was that one only for his? Uh, that was just to check the one. Oh. Okay. Can Can Lucifer do an arcana check on the far left with the smaller rows and shrinks? Yeah, go for it. Get go. a seventeen. <laughs> While they're doing that, I want to look around and see if I can see anything out of the ordinary, Kenku-like, or just someone who looks out of place <laughs> while this is happening. Okay, okay, okay. Um, make me an investigation check. Ooh, I'm good at these. <laughs> 22. Oh. 22, okay, okay. Jennings, what did you get? A nine. Nine. <laughs> Fortunately, uh, with yourself, not really too much invested in the uh, knowledge of the arcane uh, containing potions and liquids of that sort. Um, all you kind of notice is that one seems itty bitty small and the other one is like <clears throat> bursting against the glass. As I thought. What? <laughs> <laughs> no, that was it. 
And <laughs> it is bottled adrenaline, right, Lucifer? That's what I thought. That's right. The one on the far left is a bottle of adrenaline. The second one is about to burst like a flubber, like a red flubber out of, it, <laughs> out of this compartment. That's all I know. That's all I need to know. Uh, but uh, as you're all looking at the vials, and Burley's like, you know, his back, his massive bugbear back is against the um, the grass hedge. The tent, the small, smaller tent in front of him, containing the dressing room of the larger tent, the big top tent that has many performances going on that a couple of you took part in before going into this restricted uh, area back here. Uh, so he's, he seems a bit hurried, um, trying to like secretly kind of give you these potions and, and kind of get on to <laughs> part of the plan. Uh, Quincy, you kind of see them like, oh, which one do we pick? I don't know, I don't know. And everyone's kind of looking behind their shoulder. Still fairly clear at this point, which and light went back to their uh, trailer overhead. But you catch something. And the dressing room behind you, as the wind kind of flaps, uh, gusts through, the flaps of the tent sort of unfurling and moving around, the sort of pit, the wind kind of picks up for just a second as you're kind of looking around, and just as you look through the flaps of that dressing room tent, just flaps open a bit wider as a sudden gust picks it up, and just under the other side of the entrance of the dressing room, a Kenku bird face appears and... Stop! Hey, you! I'm gonna go run. Run? Yep, okay. I'm run after it. Kenku! Oh, goodness! Um, uh, Moss takes the middle potion and runs. <laughs> you take the middle potion? Do you drink it or you just take it? I, no, I just take it, pocket it. Bye! I'll call you later. Wait, uh -huh. no, I, I said, I said, take one. What are you, what are you going? It's just one. <laughs> well, so I suppose, good sir, that this is the potion as Lisa was turning around. This is the one that we're taking. That is good. That is all a do. And I also take off after Quincy. <laughs> we were allowed to take one? <laughs> <laughs> Emmy, hurry. Oh, okay, coming. <laughs> I'll say, so, uh, Moss, you just poof, grab the middle potion and dart off towards the Kenku. Uh, Abby, you leave the golden pretty one kind of in the hand of the bugbear. I'm a little sad. As, as you <laughs> all just book it over towards the, the Kenku who just darted off, all start running forward. Uh, I need you all to make dexterity checks. Oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy. This will be determining how fast you are running to catch up to the Kenku. Oh, my dexterity is 15. Oh, that's an 18. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 14. Ooh. So 15, uh, 14. Uh, 18. No, I 18. For D and D Beyond, the B is a natural 20. Yes. <gasps> oh. And oh wait, oh, wait. You said it's a dexterity check. Yeah. Plus one, 21. Let's go. 21. So. I'm gonna show you what I rolled. It was a 19. Ah, let's go. Wait, oh, wait, yeah. Get him, Lucy. <laughs> so, as you all just start rocketing uh, through the dressing room into the big top uh, carnival tent, a lot of performers are still there. Some of the uh, guests are kind of being ushered out as the performance is kind of ending at this point. They just go. Ah, just, just four of you just rocket out of the dressing room. Even sorry, excuse anybody, me, sorry. Anybody sorry. Anybody sorry. is like, hey, wait, you're not supposed to be there. We'll, we'll be right back. And you just dart out super quickly. Um, Lucifer, you were able to just, with your uh, wings uh, that have kind of sprouted out from the magic from uh, Mr. Light, you're able to just get a bit of a gust uh, ahead of the troop as you go ahead but the magic starts to wear off the minute you start to kind of leave the big top entrance as you are able to just like stride past your friends and this Kenku bird is starting to bump into various patrons as you see it darting through. I'm gonna have you all make one more dexterity check to catch him. Stop that Kenku! 17. 15. Oh, wow. technically that's a dirty 20. Sorry, I was muted. 11. 11, <laughs> 20. Quincy, you got? Uh, 15. 15. Oh, wait, well, that was the second one, right? Yeah. Yeah, one more to try to catch him. I burned out all my nitrous on my sprint. <laughs> <laughs> Four. <laughs> oh. oh, no. I'm 
so sad I didn't bring my physical dice on this trip. He rolled a nine. <gasps> so, as you rush over to gr- running over to the Kenku and you see him like trying to snap, the bird is trying to snap his fingers. You see his form kind of <laughs> kind of distort and change as they're trying to disguise self and get ahead, but they can't seem to concentrate as they look back, <laughs> bumping into different patrons. Hey, watch it. You see various um, uh, people inside the carnival, their wings kind of flapping around, some of them getting ripped and some of them getting torn off as this Kenku is just running. And uh, <laughs> Lucy, with that extra stride of gust from those big demonic red wings that Mr. Light had given you. You see them sort of slowly disintegrate down as your sides and your speed is starting to lessen, but you just take one giant and you tackle the Kenku to the ground as the two of you start rolling um, in the dirt and you start, you sort of tumble from the big top uh, tent and you start rolling around and uh, a bunch of uh, witch light hands are like sort of looking at you and everyone in the area is just kind of aghast for one second um, as you kind of have this Kenku now in your possession. Uh, what do you want to do? <clears throat> can, I, can, I, can I rope him up with my rope for my bag? Uh, you you want down? You want to try to time up with the rope? Uh, yeah, or make I, it. Or, or, or even better, should I just roll a check for a strength check just to see if I can just keep him? Yeah, held, if you roll a strength check, you just grab him, him, grab him in place. Have the rest of us be our way up to him yet? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, at this yeah. point, you would have gotten up as, as you just see uh, Lucy's wings just sort of turn to dust and disintegrate as soon as they leave the big top extravaganza tent. Ooh. And they just with a big leap, blah, use that final gust from the wings to just <laughs> and tumble in the grass. Uh, I got a 13. Uh, 13, okay. Hopefully. God damn, these rolls. Uh, yeah. Would you like our potion? Oh, yeah, we didn't take that one. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> uh, four. Let's you go. got a four. 13 will be enough. So you wrap up the Kenku in your arms, finally, uh, as, you, as the Kenku kind of try to struggle and wiggle out, but you've got them tightly around um, in your in your grip. And the Kenku has this kind of sort of a long uh, dark blue robe that's kind of frayed and tattered at the bottom, almost resembling kind of feathers. Uh, but the Kenku uh, themselves does look like a medium humanoid shape, uh, exactly like crow-like, like black feathers, black uh, beak, um, yellow eyes. Uh, they have kind of this, this cloak that comes down sort of in a V-neck um, down past their waist and kind of tethers off by their knees. Um, they have big, long, sangy uh, sleeves with a bit of a light golden trim on it. And then there's sort of dark brown trim that kind of folds down uh, around their back, their shoulders, and near their uh, their collarbone. Also displaying these uh, fairy-like wings, sort of uh, four in total, two to one side, two to the other, with this light beige kind of color with a bit of dark brown inlay and kind of dark brown circles on each wing um kind of sharp talons around their uh around their hands and bird-like feet on the bottom but you got the kenku just <laughs> tightly wrapped as some of the witch light hands wearing various colorations are just kind of aghast like it's exactly like if you were running out of an attraction at disneyland and just ah, poof, just tackled one of the patrons and just this crowd is kind of circling around you as you have the kenku in your hand I have Coco. I'll have Coco kind of like in a kind of a pistol form where his like beak is out, kind of ready to fire, but I have his gun. All right, we got the Kenku. Everyone stay calm. We are here for a higher job. We are taking this Kenku with us. Don't move, bird boy. And he walks up smiling, thinking this was a fantastic run. <laughs> uh, Quincy, make me an intimidation check. Ew. Um, what is my oh that's a seven <laughs> seven uh, as you have the Kenku in your grasp uh, the Kenku doesn't seem to be too afraid from your 
pistol that you just kind of have out. It doesn't really even know if it's a gun or not. It's just kind of. I'll shoot between his legs. Um. Look, look, look. Um. Do it again. Goes oh, like looks up to Lucifer. Please, please, we have to. You, you, you have to hide me. You have to hide me. Please, I'll tell you whatever you want. I'll return the voice of the mime if you'd like. Just don't let them capture me, please. Stabil this face. Stole the mime's voice. You heard my friend. Is there a place where we can go that isn't public where we can interrogate the Kenku? Um. Yeah. There's a couple of. um, Pause. Uh, hmm. can, are, are any of you good at tying knots and want to use your rope so that if I let him go, this this sneaky little the creature doesn't run away? Moss holds up Fluffy. What oh, I'm great at knots. Is knots. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what skill knots would be. <laughs> at hand? Uh, dexterity? Probably. Who's got a high dexterity or whatever it takes? Uh, tying knots? Hmm. I think like maybe do a strength check to see how how like how hard you can tie them up. Okay. Um, yes. Or, Moss, do you have good knot tying skills with your? Be like a strength or dexterity oh, maybe. Okay, well I'm gonna do dexterity then because it's it's higher. Just to see how fast you can tie them up. <laughs> That's an eight. <laughs> Oh, an eight, so you start to like get up to the Kenku with rope, and the Kenku just like kind of kicking you off with the with his little feet as Lucifer has them like a above the gun. <laughs> ah, okay, look, ah, ah, so stop, ah, and just starts crowing uh, as you're just shooting by the leg. It's like okay, 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 I'll be, I'll be come, I'll be come, I'll be come. Don't move. You see, you see some of the, you come with us. You see some of the witch-like hands be like, hey, what's going on over here? Very Mr. Witch like, and coming. Mr. Light told us to do this back. To your jobs. Oh, the Ken, the Kenku. They've got the Kenku. They got the Kenku. Quick, go tell Witch and Light. Hurry, they got the Kenku. And you see like three or four of them just like running off towards uh, the backstage area um, as a Kenku is up at you, uh, Lucifer, with your his back kind of to your back. You have him like this. The Kenku looks at you. Please, please, don't let them take me. Look, I'll return the voice of the mime. I'll do whatever you want. Look, Zabilna's fate is in the balance. Please, we have to save her. Please. Insight check. Mm. Yeah. Mm. I'll just stay on. Abby's getting a That's a dirty fun. 20. Ooh. Ooh. Um, so dirty 20. Uh, they are dead serious. There's no shift in their eyes. They are 1,000% when they say Zabil, we have, Zabilna's fate is in the balance, please. This worry on their face of them being caught, mm. uh, the seriousness of saying this, they are. there's no fault in their voice. Them Does saying Zabilna's hide? fate is here. They are, and what are we, we, what are we out right now? I'm gonna Pardon run me. like... What are, what are we, we are just outside the big top 10, right? Yeah, you just sort of tackle down there and grab them there. Okay. I'm just trying to see if there's a place on the map we can go to. Yeah, so the rule 20 map right now is like where we're at, right? Or no? Um, uh, the roll 20 map? No. Uh, okay, okay, so don't reference that. Got it. We just run and dip behind something. Lucy, bring the ball. Yeah, the, the, the map there was for the instance that you had that uh, another fight in the backstage area. Um, right. But like with the multiple tents and setups, like there's there's a lot of places that you can just like run and hide and kind of get out of dodge. There's right. lots of people around to kind of hide through. So, if we're looking for something, there's whoop. a bunch of this nice, pretty color tents over to our right. Yes. Yes. Let's go. So Lucifer stands up and says, "Okay, if you stay calm, stick with us, we'll keep you safe, but you you must promise not to run away." I I won't. I won't. I won't. I won't. I won't. I won't run away. I'm I'm gonna yell to everyone. Let Mr. Witch and Mr. Light know that we've taken the Kenku to that tent, the opposite direction tent. (laughs) (laughs) I do not suggest that tent. Okay, so you've got um, <laughs> at the big top currently. You're kind of just like a little bit in front of it, over to the left. Um, you see in front of you the Cali, the Calliope. Uh, there's some little bit of stalls um, just over to the left of the big top, um, and then inside of that sort of circled area, um, sort of on an angle from the big top, there's the Pixie Kingdom and the Bubble uh, Pop Teapot rides um, and attractions. Um, then you also have the Hall of Illusions, which you've been to already. That kind of is a bit of a maze for people to find one another. 
um, in that instance. So out of out of the locations that you're familiar with, um, that you've interacted with, you do know that the Hall of Mirrors are probably the best place just to like get lost and have a hard time if anyone even saw you going there would probably take a little bit to find you. But the Kenku mm-hmm. doesn't have a ticket. Oh no, God. the Kenku does <laughs> not have a Sweet, 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 Teddy. But, but... So Lucifer doesn't let go of the Kenku and says, great, thank you for agreeing and continues to carry him even though he's agreed he won't run away. But there are um, there are these stalls here as well. That's just sort of the closest area to the, the big top that you could try to hide behind as well. Let's, it's completely up to you. Let's go to the blue one. Go to the blue tent. Let's go. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna take. I'm gonna pass prestidigitation and kind of just like and just do like a little like cloud. <laughs> <laughs> so let me let me get this series of events correct. You tackle Ken the Ken coup. Mm-hmm. Lucifer has it in the arms. Uh, Moss, you run up and, and try to tie the rope, and they're kind of kicking and resisting. Meanwhile, <laughs> Quincy with their metal bird, pew, pew, da, ah, ah, just like flinking around. Now Lucifer just tightened into grips, not able to let go. The Kenku then says, Please, I'll return the voice. I'll return the voice of the mime. Please, uh, Zabilna's fate is in the balance. Please don't let them take me. You then start to say, Wait, we can't let them take him. Uh, we gotta figure this out. Quincy then shouts out, Tell Mr. Witch and Mr. Light we're going to be taking him to that tent over there. Poof! And then a smoke bomb <laughs> just envelops you all with precipitation. Uh, I'm going to have you all make a stealth check really quick. I would like to clarify that even though I wasn't able to tie up the Kenku, I did tie a knot with, Ma- with Fluffy around its ankle. <laughs> I, I have it restrained, so Lucy. I got a string it. Of, I of, got it. A string of yarn is tied around the Kenku's ankle, and you have the big ball. You're like, I'll always know where he is. <laughs> so that's, actually, that's actually a smart idea. I like that. So, Emmy <laughs> is heavily focused on the whole taking the voice in the mind because he. Oh! <gasps> but I rolled a 14. 23. I rolled a 9. <laughs> 11. Well, it's because I'm carrying you, a. You, you do have another person with you, yeah. That's not a bad roll for two. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Uh, let's see. Let's see if any which. I'm going to roll the disadvantage because you do have a bit of a cloud of smoke around you. And it's going to be difficult for them to see. I can make a distraction if we need. Okay, there's about four hands there. I love grapes. Four hands? Oh my gosh. Man, there's a lot of people around here. Why do we gotta be so public, guys? Why do we gotta be so loud? Oh my gosh. <laughs> Each of the hands have two hands, but technically there's eight hands. There's only four circus hands there, who in turn each have two hands, so eight. Four circus hands of eight hands in total. Sounds like a party! Exactly, Envy. Well done. Cheers to you. <laughs> <laughs> Lucifer's yeah. gonna celebrate all of. All of Abby's discoveries from now here on out. <laughs> yes, good, Abby. Good. Cheers. To you. <laughs> Quite right. <laughs> okay. So, you go uh, run over to the. Are you going? Sorry, you going into the stall, the blue stall, amongst the other four, and just trying to pff, wedge your way in there. Mm-hmm. Um, this one is one of the. Um, uh, Oh, what do they call it? Um, sort of a moving picture stall. Ooh. We kind of go in there. and There's like a little small, like fairly like medium to large size, like circular hole uh, that you kind of like has a, a black curtain in the like behind it. They kind of supposed to poke your head through. Uh, but there would be enough room for like shoulders to kind of go through. And then this like picture show kind of starts happening. Um, but as you put down that smoke bomb. Oh, whoa, what was that? Where did they go? They said they're going to the, to the tent over there. Oh, shit. Oh, that can't be so clever. Okay. Ah, over here, over here. And you just see like a bunch of muffled voices. Everyone's just generally confused. A few people coughing like, my eyes. Oh, God. Ah, ah. Everyone's just kind of general chaos. Some kids screaming, mommy, what's happening? It's okay, so it's probably a part of the show. And you're all just rushing out of the cloud of smoke, um, making a beeline towards these sort of empty stalls. But you kind of approach it and you see this one blue stall with this sort of medium sized hole in it that you all are going to have to try to jump into. <laughs> and it's a bit of a tight squeeze. Uh, so I'm going to have you guys make, let's say, 
dexterity or athletics. This will be either you're like forcing your way, kind of getting through the hole, or some of you just running and just doing like a jumping dive. Uh, 16. 16. Okay. Oh, no. I got an eight. Eight? Uh, with <laughs> athletics plus five, it's a seven. Oh, mine is a dexterity, by the way. Dexterity. Okay, eight, seven, 16. Quincy? Come on, Quincy. Oh, no, Quincy's broken. Oh, Quincy is frozen. Uh, uh, Quincy is frozen. This most Do you want one of us to roll for him? Uh, yeah, I think we're going to have to. Do we know his modifiers? Uh, I have the... Oh, there he goes. Must have been an internet flub. Uh, that is okay. I have their stats here. So let's see. Oh, Quincy got an 18. He said in chat. I got ah! an 18. Hey, there you are. Awesome. Okay. That was weird. 18. <laughs> so you're all kind of booking it through the cloud of smoke that Quincy erupted. And Moss, you're kind of running with your cat-like agility. You're just like, Row! you just jump instantly through the hole. No problem whatsoever. <laughs> Quincy as well, just sort of running, hightailing it. You kind of just kip up, put your hand um, on the sort of lip of the hole and whoop, kind of tumble in, <laughs> fall into like sort of shoulder first, tumble in. Uh, Abby, you run, eh, eh, eh. jump through your wings, poof, ah, poof, fall down. Yeah. And then Jennings, you uh, you run into, but you've got the Kenku around uh, your arms. You kind of jump in through, fall backward. Uh, as the two of you aren't able to fit through the hole, the smoke is still billowing, but it's starting to slowly dissipate at this point. Make one more check. Can I pull the Kenku through with with Fluffy? <laughs> you know what? Yes. Make me an uh, an uh, a strength check on that to see. Can I assist so she gets advantage? Yes, you can. Okay, what, what check are you having me do? Because if it's one oh of the- Oh god, thank god for advantage. Uh, you said it was strength? Yes. 15. What, what check are you having me do? Another dexterity check? Uh, one second. Uh, so that is a natural one on the resistance. Yes! So, Jennings, you sort of, after Abby kind of tries to jump in and their long, lanky body with their big plume of a feather tail kind of <laughs> hits on the hole as they fall down. You with the Ken Hugh try to jump in. You're like, oh, shit. <laughs> you kind of don't realize how big the hole is until it's too late. You got to fall down with the Kenku. You release the Kenku from your grip, and the Kenku kind of falls down with their blue cloak and feathers kind of hidden behind. Their wings kind of crushed. You see the Kenku start to get up. <laughs> See you later, suckers. <laughs> and <they're just> like, <laughs> their legs just get kipped up from under them as Moss and um, Quincy from inside pull on the yarn, <laughs> fall through, and they're, they're but a plume of crow feathers just <laughs> fl flap down and float um, around the uh, around the uh, the uh, structure. That's what I'm trying to say. The stall. Oh. The two of you, though, on your butts, trying to get up. Uh, this at this point, you don't need to make too much of a check. Uh, you just have to carefully just kind of put yourselves um, uh, through the hole there. Um, so at this point, make a dexterity uh, check at advantage as you're quickly trying to like get through the hole before the mist kind of settles before somebody sees you coming in here. <laughs> it didn't help with the advantage, but it got a seven. Seven. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> I'm happy to become a distraction and flee the other way. <laughs> <laughs> We're going this way, Lucy. Um, <clears throat> My first one's a four. Yeah, and Lucy got a 17. At, at advantage, I rolled an 18. If I have a dexterity plus one. Ah, 18, okay. Save me, so, Lucy. As you see the kangaroo <laughs> fall into uh, the stall there, you're like, come on, Eddie, quick, before, this, before the smoke gets away. You just sort of worm your way, Winnie the Pooh style through the circular oh. hole in the stall uh, with, the, <laughs> with your sort of uh, magical uh, demon wings kind of falling down. You just have your synthetic carnival wings by your side. You're able to oh. kind of worm your way through into the stall as well. Uh, but Ebby, you are there by yourself with your elongated body, your plume of feathers kind of halting you from getting inside. You see the mist fitting out now you start to see like kind of opaque through it as you see very concerned carnival goers kind of running out of the smog and a couple of witch light hands like trying to search around make one more check at advantage because you are right next to it 
<laughs> if you fail this, the smoke is going to dissipate and they'll be able to, to sort of see you there. 13. And, uh, there you go! <laughs> so, <laughs> the DC was only 10! <laughs> oh, <laughs> my, 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 no. my double rolls were both 13. <laughs> oh, oh, <thank> <laughs> No, so, yeah, so as soon as the mist starts to dissipate, it becomes opaque, you're like, uh, uh, <gasps> just kind of breathe in as much as you can and make yourself as circular as you can. You kind of put all your plume feathers behind you as you grab them and just, uh, just make yourself like a long dart. <laughs> Go inside the stall just before, <laughs> uh, just before the mist finally is dissipated fully and kind of falls to the ground. And uh, the, the way behind you is now not blocked or, or um, distracted by fog anymore. Can but Eddie land in a very fun, fun way. <laughs> what, what kind of way would you like to fall? Kind of like roll and then like land on their butt and be like, mm. <laughs> <laughs> Kind of lawn, lawn dart it and <laughs> kind of go into like a somersault roll and then just kind of spin around and... <laughs> kind of, yeah. <laughs> it's like the whole time I plan this. So yeah. now that we're all like, <laughs> oh, like hidden, uh, can Moss like unsheath a claw, hold it underneath the Kenku's neck or beak, uh, along with her fluffy in the other hand to make sure that it knows that she she like has it tied up in some way, and ask, "What do you know about Zabilna?" Uh, all right, make an intimidation check. With advantage. With advantage, yeah. There's a lot of you around them. You got the, the metal bird pointed at you <laughs> as well. Reach I'll for wait. the sky. I'll wait, I'll wait after uh, Moss's turn. Intimidation. Where is that? Uh, should be on the set of skills, uh, that long column. 14? 14. Yeah, no chance in hell. Uh, surrounded by all of you, <sighs> you got the dagger right up to the Kanker's neck. <clears throat> They're just like frozen solid the metal uh, bird also uh, pointed at the kenku as well all right ah, all right all right you, you got you got me you got me okay uh, i'm here i'm here look you've tied my ankle very very well i'm not going anywhere thank you uh, there's no lost eyes if we get the <laughs> like, start talking uh lucy you said you wanted to do something really quick Lucifer is over Moss's shoulder, wants to stare deeply into his Kanku's eyes and said, I heard what you said when you fell out of my grasp. You promised me to go anywhere, so I don't trust you anymore. Don't move, or else. Or else what? Doesn't matter, Abby, but you did so good hearing. I'm so proud of you. <laughs> Are you? Yeah, or else. Well done, Abby. Well, well done. I did it. God, your, <laughs> your plume is just magnificent. It, it, it's hard to look at. Okay. Um, <laughs> hey, look. Are you, were you hired by Witch and Light? No, we're here for Zabilna. You're here to find Zabilna too? We're here to keep Zabilna safe. Where is... Well, we were going to try, but then you got in our way and started messing things Correct. up, and we got in trouble with Witch to Witch and Witch and Light, and I have to get you! And you heard a dragonfly! Start we talking! Don't... And the mime? What's wrong with you? What are you doing here? Okay, look, look, <clears throat> look okay, I, I'm sorry, I crow when I'm nervous and under duress. <laughs> look, I'm just, I've been causing trouble at the carnival, and I refuse to stop until Witch and Light divulge what they know about Zibilna in Prismir. Okay, many years ago, she made a fae, I, I made a fey pact with Sibilna. Okay, the arch fey who rules the Feywell domain of Prismir. And recently became convinced something is amiss with my patron love. And as a warlock myself, I sense that Sibilna is no longer in touch with me. It's a very disconcerting thought, all right? And mm. I know that the owners, which in light, know something that they're not telling me. And I tried to question them before, but they keep giving me the cold shoulder. And I know they know more than they're letting on. I agree what? with you there. 
What leads you to believe that they know more than you're letting on, than they're letting on? Because I believe they they know more than they're letting on too. Quincy, that's not helpful. <laughs> <laughs> well, Quincy, now that we're hidden, can you share more in depth with what you overheard? Mm-hmm. You snuck back there. I took the took the potion and I snuck back and I started rummaging around through different things and they were about to come back and I heard them talking and they mentioned that just things needed to happen soon or things get bad kind of thing. Like there's, it was very vague, but- First and foremost, Quint, uh, thank you. What is your actual name? Um, Unless you want to keep being called names like bird brain and such, which I don't think is quite nice. Uh, fair enough. My name is Kettlestream. Mm. Kenny the King. Like Ins- insight check. <laughs> sure. Insight check. <laughs> I'll give Abby advantage because I want to also stare him down. Nineteen. Too. Okay. No. <laughs> Wait. We'll see if you're if you get that twenty. No, nineteen. Still good. <laughs> 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 so indeed, um, you see this uh, uh, Kenku talking with you has no reason why they would lie at this point. You've kind of got them cornered. They seem to be speaking the truth. Um, and also, uh, Abby, you being kind of a Aarakocra yourself um, from a bird race, you also can kind of ascertain that Kettlestream is a uh, female. Moss nudges Ebby. <laughs> <laughs> what? Oh, ne- never mind. And then she like fluffs yes. his like plumage a bit. Um, can I do a history check on prisoner? Would that be something that I would know or learn in class? Um, no, Prismere yeah. is is a is a realm that you've never been to before, and oh, it's, it's a place. Okay. Yeah, Prismere is a, um, a domain of delight. It's uh, one of many realms that exists within the Feywild that Sibilna kind of hails from. This is information that Mydrock had uh, sort of explained to you a little bit in, in hiring you for this job, um, that Sibilna was their patron as well um, when they were starting off with their warlock mm-hmm. abilities. and was the patron that uh, Mydrock kind of... Uh, gave homage to and got their power from um, and had recently lost all connection with her um, and Prismere was the domain that they were from. Okay, so with that recap, uh, I'm going to tell Kettlestream, we were hired by Madrock and they also felt this disappearance of Zabilna and that's why we're here. You see... <laughs> Mudrock just, or sorry, uh, Kettle Stream just ruffled the feathers of bed, but, bleh, <laughs> spit on the ground. Madrock, Madrock. <laughs> Got some bad blood. Was the, was he the favorite? I mean, he, he would say so. Oh. Oh. <laughs> 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 An untrustworthy brat. So what do you think Mr. Witch and Mr. Light know about Zabilna's disappearance? What is your hypothesis? Well, the last time I was able to get close enough to hear a conversation of theirs, all I could ascertain from them was something along the lines of, and you see the Kettle Stream's voice instantly mimic the voices of Witch and Light as Kettlestream bellows out a perfect imitation of Witch saying, Someone is going to find out about this! They'll shut us down! And then adds on to that uh, Light's voice, We agreed to this pact! Our hands were forced, but our eyes were open! We let the hourglass cauldron take what it wants, and in return, we stay in business! That is what you want, right? Hmm. Our mm. It seems like there is a big. So we have Zabilna, and then we got Mr. Witch and Mr. Light, and then we got someone over Mr. Witch and Mr. Light who probably did something to Zabilna through Mr. Witch and Mr. Light, which means Mr. Witch and Mr. Light have Zabilna, and they got someone over their head, and they can't let everyone out and know. So Mr. Witch and Mr. Light know something. We probably should kill this guy up here. I agree. <laughs> No! 
no, 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 no. You don't need to do that. Don't do that. Don't you want to free Sabuna too? I mean, yeah, I that'd imagine, be, that'd, that'd I be imagine that the only people that want harm to Zabilna are the people, as Quincy so eloquently say, said, above Mr. Witch and Mr. Light, so why don't we just handle them first? What if they have the key without without any interrogation or leverage, like what Burley said? Moss blushes when she says his name. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Burley. Uh, Burley, I'm so sorry. Um, we we may get more information on how to free her or where her location is. She may not even be in this domain. It just seems that Mr. Witch and Mr. Light have been hired to do something, or it's either that or they're being, they're being, or they're being leveraged against, mm-hmm. forced to do something that they don't want to do. They so if we could possibly break them out of their pact, do you think they would be able to release the bill now? And everybody's happy, and we get free passage to the carnival for life. Kettle stream okay. question. Okay. <laughs> you've been, you've been after these answers for how long now? After these things for a couple of weeks. And and do you believe that through witch and light is the only way to find a solution here? No other direction. I believe through what I have learned in trying to get as close as I can that which through which Mr. Light are not trustworthy. They've made some sort of deal and my patron is trapped in Prismere and I want her out. Do you know how to get to Prismere? I haven't quite figured that out yet, but I know that they do. The owners know how to get in there and I've been trying day and night to get that infernal watch or that stupid cane to try to bend their will so that will, they will tell me. Ooh. What watch are you talking about? The one that the he's making that, around. That witch what? has. He, he checks it constantly. I remember it's the their most. The it's watch. their most valued possessions and if I could just get cut them talents on those Hagger. things, I can what? force them to tell me where it is. How would you you want to help me with the Little plan. Do you want to help? Do you, you want do? to help us? Let help us help you, so you can help us. Help us. Do you want to give your like intentions to, to help freeze the builder? I will do whatever you want. That's all I ever want. That's all we need to know. I'm gonna bring everyone in. Just kind of like fluff Abby's feathers up and pull them all in. All right. I think we should use Kettle's magical and wonderful talent of mimicking voices to call one of them, either Mr. Witch or Mr. Light, away from the other. Get the watch. Go to the other one. Do the same thing. And then we have the watch and the cane. We get to Prismere. We save Zabilna. We come home. Everybody's happy. Free passes for life. But why does it have to be violent? Lucifer is in shock. He's never heard Quincy speak quite like this before. I mean, as much as I would like to see them kind of hurt for their stupid dealings, I mean, there's a lot of people around. Um, it might be a bit harder to... It might be easier to be a bit more discreet. Uh, no, it, I'm out of it, ideas. That's all I got. So, wait, but so, wait, but wait, but wait. Kettle stream, if you've been doing this for weeks and at this for weeks, I imagine you figured some of the in and outs of the open hours, the closed hours of the circus, when they go back to the trailer, all these types of things and schematics, no? Yes, that's the thing. I am just one goddamn female bird, and it's very hard to do these things on your own. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm a bird. No, 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 don't be, don't be sorry. So if we... If yes, we Evie, to, you are a bird. If we were to... <laughs> <laughs> Lisa looks over to Evie and goes... Anyways... <laughs> If you were to what? team up with another four type of, you know, hyper intelligent, hyper smart, what else are we? Hyper fast. Was also Freaking. a very attractive, very single bird. <coughs> <Eddie. Rawr. laughs> would you would you feel like we'd have a little more strategy to to make this work? Um, yes, there is one event that I have been trying oh. to figure out how to use it to my advantage, but. I've never been able to get close enough, but perhaps with your help, we could 
perchance work together, yes? Is if it does. If you bring back the mime's voice. I'm very curious about that one. Is it the uh, Deleuze? <laughs> Sorry, uh, Jane, what are you saying? I'm saying, is it the Deleuze? <laughs> is it the Deleuze? Yeah, because they're gone. Gondolas. Oh. <laughs> oh. Geez. I was like, Deleuze? Oh, good <laughs> job, Eddie. Smooth. Well done. <laughs> No, I look. I just, I, I, I just, I just gave that thing just a little bit of a pinch, just to get my point across. You, the dragonfly would be fine. Um, but to put the men at risk. Just and for you, Quincy, asking about the voice, uh, make me a intimidation or persuasion check. Persuade. Probably Can I better. Help him with that? Uh, sure. If you kind of like with, with talking about the teammate type of scenario. Yeah. I got a twenty-two. Never mind. He's good. Holy shit. Um, so yeah. After you kind of say that, and you're like, why? Why is there so many? Okay. Just, uh, I was always planning to give it back. Okay. Just. I needed them to pay attention to me, and they would not. Do it. It's fine. Look, it's okay. I just <sighs> and they reach under their cloak and uh, uh, pull out. <laughs> Kettle Stream produces a corn husk doll with a thorny stem tied around uh, its neck that seems to represent Candlefoot. A voodoo doll is. Is that a voodoo doll? It's an akin to one, you might say. Look, can we? Can I just, look out the hole and see if I can see Candlefoot? Uh, sure. Make a perception check. Just I think the like last time you out. saw him, he was taking part in the big top extravaganza. Oh. He got trapped in a box. Oh, that's he a was trapped one. in a box. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> and you never unlocked him out of that box. Oh no! He had breathing holes. It's a natural one, so I. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, unfortunately, uh, you did not see uh, Candlefoot sort of in the vicinity. But I will say, when you did burst and burst out of the back uh, staff area and you ran past the dressing room at the start of the session through the big top, and everyone was just kind of leaving, I didn't give you this perception check because you were just had one goal in mind. But Lucy, since you were sort of leading that pact, uh, I will give you a, a, a quick history check to see if you could see if he was still there. Testing my memory, are you? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, plus one is 14. 14. So as you were rushing towards the Kenku, as you just burst forward with those wings giving you that burst of speed, you do recall most of the performers and the audience sort of leaving, congregating outside the uh, the entrance, and you do recall just the corner of your eye. <laughs> <laughs> Kenku banging on an invisible box, trying to get out. Okay, so Kettle Stream, why is it that you took the voice from the mine? I told you, I was trying to get them to pay attention to me. I was trying every sort of way to, to get them to just listen to me. To, to So so here's the question. If they didn't know that it was you who took the voice, what was it about this one target in particular? Was he a perfectly fine mime beforehand, or was there something about him that you didn't like that you needed to take the voice away? It's all right, I guess. Just a random target. You hurt my friend. So it Who's sounds very much... Sounds very much like if you want to make a deal. Now, I guess, now, team, we need to know how much this bird will actually, you know, stands by his honor. If he's actually going to uphold a promise, because he promised us before. And as soon as he was loose, he was about to say, see you, suckers. So, I don't know how... Mm. Look, I, 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 wasn't very, I wasn't very acquainted with you just yet. I thought maybe you were hired by Mr. Witch and Mr. Light. Look, I, I apologize. I did. Well, I if he wants our help... help. Go <laughs> <laughs> no roll inside check. Ten. Ten. <laughs> Was it actually uh, ten? Yeah. 
Uh, no, yeah, they are, they're kind of like, they're not lying, essentially. They had, they didn't know if you were hired guns for Mr. Witch and Mr. Light. Obviously, the Kenku was causing a lot of trouble uh, for them during this time, so they didn't know if you were hired guns or if you were, you know, they had no idea to know if you were trying to aid them in any way. So, in the moment, it seemed like they were just trying to get out of, like, ditched you because they thought you were hired guns, essentially. But now, having heard your kind of story and you're kind of being a bit more, well, not so nice. You're a bit bullying, but uh, clearly... <laughs> Interrogating. Interrogating. Uh, clearly, you're not, you know, uh, hired guns of theirs. So... Uh, Lu- uh, oh, go ahead. Lu- Lu- uh, turns to the team because he wonders as much as it would be good to re- replace the mime's voice, we have also not been so super kind to the mime number one. Number two, how do we know that the mime does not lean more toward, towards Mr. Witch and Mr. Light? And if we give him back his voice, whether he knows it's us or not, he then goes complaining to Mr. Witch and Witch and Mr. Light, or do we try to make two different deals where if we are somehow able to speak to the mime to get him on our side, if we guarantee we get his voice back, and then also by pump. Ooh, I see what also you're doing here. You know, that's, another, that's another teammate. A and blackmailed also, ally. I right, like and then we also make Mr. Kettlestream give him his voice back, and in return, we will help him with his mission as two new allies. I agree. I think that's a good idea. I have a quick question for Kettlestream. Hmm. Um, I noticed that you were trying to uh, snap your fingers, and you are able to, is it polymorph? But what are the limitations? Are you able to, like... What are the limitations to your... Are you a druid? Transformation abilities. Uh, no, I'm not a druid. I'm a warlock. I'm, I does not do any warlocks of any kind. I'm just very good at mimicking sounds that I've heard before. Sounds, but what about bodies? Like, different techniques? Well, yes, I am also very skilled at disguising myself to look like others. So, what do you? My question is, what are we gonna do when we get the ca- the the watch and or the cane? I'd say just press them for all they're worth, if you ask me. Just say you're not giving it back until they tell you where the entrance to Prismia is. That doesn't sound valuable enough. Are you kidding me? Do you see how many times that fat oaf looks at that goddamn watch? And, at least sorry, twice. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I didn't, I didn't mean, I just got to be calm. How long have you been here? Do you know anything about the crown? The, the crown? Yeah, the crown with the celebration thingy that they kind of give to people. It's really pretty. It's in their, t- it's in their tent thing. Crowning the monarch? It. Yeah, whatever that is, the butterfly thing. Oh, the monarch. The butterfly. <laughs> Nothing about that. Well, um, that's the event in question that I've been trying to figure out how to use to my advantage. They, at the end of every day of the carnival, they crown the witch-like monarch, the person who has given the most joy and, and prosperity to the day's events. Mm. They have a whole ceremony for it. Mr. Witch comes out with his cane and knights the person. Mr. Witch is uh, escorted by, uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, uh, Durlegran, this very big, huge, old, uh, big cat fellow with big butterfly wings and multiple tentacles splicing around. Ooh, a party, it sounds like fun. I don't think yeah. we've seen that creature yet. No, so, the displacive beast is near the lost and found somewhere. Looks after children and anyone who needs to find their parents or items that are lost, that kind of thing. Oh, we haven't been over there yet. You're not missing okay, so much. So, Just so, a bunch of screaming uh, children. What so if? We, need a, we need a plan of action. Do we help out the mime? And if so, do we make sure that he's going to be an ally? Can can I give it to the mime? The mime's my friend. Yeah. I think Abby should go give it to the mime as good favor, and we should go take down Mr. Witcher or Mr. Light for their item. So here's the question, because it sound, sounds like <clears throat> Kettlestream's doll here is like a voodoo doll, and there's a there's a very sharp, spiky n- noose around the mime's doll's neck. So it sounds like you don't really have to give him anything. You just take that little vine off of the doll's neck, and that's done. But if we take it in a way, so we can either just give the voice back and 
good deed done and he never knows it was us or we let him know that we can help him to get freed from it but in order to give him his voice back he has to promise us something and then we can also let him out of the box that he's currently trapped in with air holes <laughs> I, I want to help I want to snack <sighs> We need a strategy and a snack. I'll do whatever you guys want. That's a good yeah. idea. As long as we get to go beat up something. I, well, think, I think the most simple thing is, is Ebby, if you want to help your friend, we simply just take the little thing off his neck, let him free, and that's it. And then, then he has no idea that we're part of this or behind the scenes or anything else. But what if, and, then we, and then we simply go after these two items to try to leverage Mr. White and uh, yeah, Mr. Light and Mr. Witch. Okay. That way you still help your friend. If you're okay with that. Okay. He just won't know that it's you who's doing it. It's okay. What do you want to do, Abby? Mm-hmm. I'm just worried that it... The, the mind will ha- say things without us knowing. So you should. You think we should probably go talk to him first? So we should, we should get him on our side first. Not even a side. We don't even know anything much other than it likes to use its hands for things. Well done. Well done, buddy. Very. So very what do we do? Stuff. We're going to flip a coin? What do we do first? I, If we're taking it back, I have a feeling that I should bring it to them because, no offense, a lot of people have been pretty mean to the mime. Okay. So you go <laughs> find the mime, and we're going to go find... I'm, I'll go with but Carol. I, but I have, I have an idea. If you drop yes. the thing on the ground, then I can say I found this on the ground and it made me feel like I should bring it to you. <laughs> I don't know how voodoo works. I don't know, because if I take it from someone, I'll say that I took it from someone, but if I found the ground, I found it on the ground. I can't really say anything about that. So what if we <laughs> semi-split up? I have great stealth. If I can keep a kettle stream on a string, they can change polymorph whatever it is into not a kenku we can hide in the shadows while you guys are close by return the voice to the mime be present for any information that the mime may give and then you can relay the information back to me and kettle stream i don't think we need to keep kettle stream on a rope no more because literally from what we have right here we're the only ones who decently re- relatively trust Kettle Stream and can probably potentially help Zabelna. So if Kettle Stream does anything wrong, we're going to basically be out and no one's going to get anything. So... It's not that I think Kettle Stream will betray us. It's more that they may go rogue. And I'm like... Well, they go rogue, then they lose does, Zabelna. Can, oh. can, anyone, can anyone do any kind of spell to keep him to his word? Is that such a thing? I'll trust him. I'll, 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 I'll take him at his... I'll take her at, his, at her word. I take it at the word, too. Okay. I'll just trust it. Look, my, my so, methods may be a little unruly, and I apologize, but I just get so frustrated no, when nobody like will it. listen to me, and that my patron won't talk to me, and I fear for her life. I'm sorry. No, look, we like, we I appreciate, you. and we like your end goal. We just want to make sure that we are moving together as one river stream, you understand, Mr. Kettle Stream. Mrs. Kettle Stream. My Question mark? It's a female. Yeah, kink is female. No, I know. Is it Mrs. or Miss? Oh, no, sorry. It's Miss. <laughs> she, must, <laughs> must <laughs> again. What? I'm so sorry. Um, reflex. Okay, so if if everyone is in agreement yeah. to trust Kettle Stream, I will take my fang and bite off what I tied to her ankle, but there's still going to be a loop there. Um, and I'm going to ask Kettle Stream, if you decide to change physical appearance, I want you to keep this on you so that if you ever need information or we, so we can verify it's you. We so we can see who, it's, who it is for the, for the thing around the ankle. That makes Please. sense. That's a good and idea. It's, it's subtle. No one can see it's, and it's, it's cute. What do we need to know from the mime? We don't know because we can't. Not really anything. If you just yeah. go towards the mime, if you go to Candlefutch, and you release that thread around the doll, the voice will come back. Ah! 
Do we want confirmation that he will help us when he gets his voice back, or do we just let his voice go free and let him? I think if Abby goes talk to him, I think Abby can make it. I think Abby's Abby, good. Uh, Abby, we trust you with that. I think Abby can okay. do it. Okay. Here you go, Abby. Thank you. Okay. Moss <laughs> bites off the the string attaching to Fluffy, and there's a little anklet around uh, Kettle Stream. Good. We're finally getting somewhere. So do we... Are we gonna wait until the Monarch event takes hold, or would I meet you there? Should I disguise myself as somebody you would recognize? Hmm. I think we need to start making moves as soon as possible. Last I saw Mr. Witch and Mr. Light were in... They were in the staff room again. You think Burley could get us back in there? We could probably do some interrogate pain. You want to you wild shape into Burley? Burley? Hmm? No, no, Burley would help us. Get through that hedge thingy. That was annoying. But isn't he, like, on duty around the carnival? Can Kettlestream uh, morph into Burley? I could what? disguise myself as Burley if need be. Oh, my goodness. But that's as if Kettle can get past the hedge. That's true. How did Burley? The hedge does seem to be more appearance-based. Oh! Well, then never mind, then. Hmm. I have been learnt. So if Abby goes do the thing, we'll wait for Abby here, and then we can go do the thingy. If Abby wants to go do the mime thingy, and then that way we're all together and we go do get Mr. Witch or Mr. Lights. King. Okay, bye. Oh. Abby starts leaving. Bye, Abby. <laughs> bye, Abby. Ow, ow. Um, all right, bye. Come back to find us when you're done. Let us know I'll pull out some dice and sit on the floor and start rolling dice. Moss looks to see if Kettlestream like looks back after Ebby. <laughs> Lucifer, Wait, Lucifer. A perception check. Uh, perception. Why can't I find it? Oh, eleven. <clears throat> don't see any eyes kind of dart over uh, <laughs> the Kenku is a bit of a uh, cranky sort uh, it's kind of hard to kind of read if there are any you know secret vibes going on they've got a secret pretty good poker vibes. face going on I'll keep, I'll keep good, my eye open he's got a very good poker face <laughs> okay. love is like a fart if you try to force it it's probably poop <laughs> well, uh, well put. Um, um, uh, Lucifer, Lucifer, uh, after all this talk and chat and, and energy, says, um, uh, Miss Kettlestream, would you like a mead? I'm going to go grab myself one after all this effort. I want a French fry, a root beer, and a cotton candy. Got it. Uh, I guess so. Are we just going to hunker down in here for the time being? Mm-hmm. Yes, we're just going to wait for Evie to get back and see what he's he's discovered in his friendship search. I am down half my health because I did fight Burly. Am I able this to rest? Crawling oh. um, so yeah, you could take uh, a short rest. Perfect. Yes, I need to heal. While, e- while Evie goes and uh, takes care of this for you. Right. Well, if you guys take a short rest, someone needs to keep an eye out on uh, Kettle Stream. Kettle Stream, come with me. Transform yourself into a only, circus goer. We only learned the the mime's name from the Kenku, right? Yeah. Uh, Candlefoot. I can't remember if you had heard that name before. I personally I think, don't I think, remember. Yeah, I don't remember right. hearing that I, name before. I think Burley might have mentioned it when you went to the Hall of Illusions the first time when Burley showed up. He's like, "What is going on here? Like, are you are you disturbing Candlefoot?" Um, we could do that. Just say that's what's happening. Okay. Yeah, but also Ken Cube did say Candlefoot can- can- as well. So whether it was before or after, you do know the name of the mime now. Oh, I just don't want to say it if it was only from a Ken Cube because then it'll be like, how do you know my name? And so. Um... <laughs> how do you know? <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure Burley would have mentioned it uh, in that interaction with the Hall of Illusions. So. Okay. Okay. Um, but for you uh, that are doing your short rest, you could use some of your hit die to try to regain some uh, HP. Okay. Rest. Yeah, the rest I'm for using me. two of them. 
Okay. Um, but with that, uh, Abby, you kind of start to make your way over to the uh, big top uh, tent as Lucy and Kettle Stream kind of transforms just a nondescript carnival goer. Uh, the two of you kind of hop out of the stall and make your way over to grab some eats and some mead for the for the company while they tip they bunker down for the meantime. Fantastic. Um, but for Ebby, yeah, it takes you just like a, you know ten or so minutes, kind of walk all the way over there. Uh, but you make your uh, way in there. The tent is fairly empty at this point. Again, once again, the light of the stars illuminating the sky, kind of roiling through with various cloud formations. Uh, but you look, you sort of pass through the entrance that you came in um, at the start of this journey, and there's still kind of a dull orange glow coming out from outside, signifying that the once again, that the sky you're seeing is somewhat magical, an affliction of being in the carnival for a long time, and that doesn't uh, signify what the real weather is outside. Um, but you eventually make your way to the big top, kind of open the flaps, and the, all the audience seats are empty. There's kind of a big pole in the middle holding the tent up with that entrance to the dressing room that you came out of before. And you just see Candlefoot, the, the sort of gray scaled coloration of a mime uh, holding their knees, just like curled up in a corner, just looking down. Okay. All right, so Abby actually pokes his head in, looks and uh, smiles bright and goes, Mr. Mime! And then starts uh, walking over uh, uh, gleefully towards uh, uh, Candlefoot. And as you say that, Candlefoot kind of looks up. As like explain through his gestures, like I've been in here all day and I can't get out. Oh, yeah, it's a <sighs> that's still there. Uh, okay. Um, so Ev so Evie goes around and like goes up to where he believes that the locks are because he can't truly remember. <laughs> and and it's like, do you have a key? Uh, Ooh. Uh, <laughs> Oops. Okay, I don't know what that means, but um, what we can do is smash it. So Evie then like pretends like there's like a giant like hammer, and then like he just like picks it up, it's like really happily. And then just swings at one of the locks. <laughs> and make, a, make a performance check to see how good your Fantastic. mind skills are. I love that. 15. <laughs> so you go, you kind of like pull out. What do you, so how, the, what do you use to break the imaginary box? Are you pulling out like a sword, a bat? So Abby like pretends that like there's like this this like a hammer just laying on the ground the whole time. It's like oh, what did you say? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I could I could also look at that. How did I miss this? Oh no, hammer! <laughs> <laughs> so wait, <laughs> go down and just kind of mime over like like what's this? Bend <laughs> over with your like feather plumed hands and just pick his imaginary like mallet, like one two. Hmm. Like back away, and you see the <laughs> kind of foot just like, like they're in a literal glass box, like afraid of the shrapnel that's about to come to them, and you just kind of like, and just make a big loud, uh, like not loud, but a big grunt Bang. as you swing over <laughs> and just hit it over like a Babe Ruth a home run swing, and uh, kind of foot just. I think it worked. <laughs> so as everyone starts brushing off his sides when he comes out yeah <laughs> so brushing off his sides he kind of steps over like what he imagines to be like the shattered sort of rigid uh, hole that's now in the glass box yeah he just, you and just just puts his hands over uh, his <laughs> arms over you gives you a big hug <laughs> oh friend yeah <laughs> <laughs> Did you see him? You see uh, Candlefoot also like breathing heavily. Like, <sighs> I thought I put air. Hey, I didn't know how much a mind needs to breathe. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm happier out. 
sorry that you got stuck in here so long. Um, I found something and I don't know why, but it makes me feel it belongs to you. And re as he reaches into po his pocket to pull out the voodoo doll. Hmm. I, I, I don't know why, but I feel like this somehow belongs to you. And so Abby's remembering about the rope thing. And so it's like, I just, I, I just, I just, and then he just pulls the, <laughs> the rope out <laughs> of the thing and, and just like lifts up at the mine. So as soon as you pull the rope off of the doll, The sort of like ethereal gust kind of comes out of nowhere and this sort of whistling wind sort of passes through your ears and you just see an instant reaction come over uh, Candlefoot all of a sudden. You can just see them kind of looking around almost like this, uh, this a bright light is kind of glittering past their throat. Um, this sort of dull orange glow kind of this glitter kind of riding up their, uh, the muscles on their on their neck, their veins kind of glow with this golden sort of hue, and this light kind of comes, radiant light coming out of their, their nostrils and their mouth. Abby puts the thing back in his pocket. Can you hear me talk? Is that my voice? Is that? It's an amazing voice. <laughs> what you you can understand me? Abby nods happily. Fart, piss, shit, bucket, poop. Beautiful. <laughs> oh my god! It just like runs around in circles. It is just like flailing. Hey! The arms around. around. <laughs> oh my God, friend, friend, th th thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. It was just like groveling on the floor with like just like elated, doing like Homer Simpson, like uh, woo, 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 <laughs> just going in circles, Abby, running in place on the ground. Abby goes over to him and just like like pats him on the shoulder and like tries to help him to stand up with Abby to be because Abby like feels everyone should be at equals, so <laughs> Abby wanted him back up. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. It's been so goddamn long since anyone ever heard my voice again. I just, I thank you, thank you. This, this last two weeks have been a literal hell for me. I've been stuck in glass boxes. People keep putting me up and like tying up bear traps with just their hands and then I fall over and it's just ridiculous. Oh no, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's okay, it's okay. Is there any way? What can I do for you, friend? Is there anything, anything at all that I can help you with? You just gotta let me know, okay? Anything at all. Okay, out of context. Um, so I'm just wondering, when we're in the chat, the thing talking, were we discussing of uh, trying to get the uh, mind to come with us and help us find Zula? Uh, sorry, say that again? So we were, while well, we were in the tent before Abby left, we were trying to get um, the mind to come join our team, right? To help oh, ask, asking team. your players. Yeah. Yeah, essentially, the, the idea was that you give the voice back, you did a nice thing for uh, for Candlefoot, and the idea is that you would try to, like, coax him into helping you with your plan, uh, whatever way you go about it, to try to get the watch or cane from, from witch or light. Um, you do know that there is a crowning ceremony that happens at the end of the day, which looks like it could be happening sometime soon, mm -hmm. um, where witch and light are there. So okay. however you want to try to communicate that, you're welcome to try all right, so Abby looks um, up to the mine and uh, says, I don't want anything. I'm just happy that you have your voice because that is what's important. But I don't like saying buts. But I, f I think... But, 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 but. <laughs> you can but. say buts all your life. It's been <laughs> uh, I'm, 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 I'm missing a friend. And I need help finding you. And Mr. Fran. Yeah. And I was wondering if you would mind coming with me to my my group that I'm with and helping us find my friend. It'd be very important. We're is trying that, to Is that red one around? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
You know what? It's you've done me such a great service. It, it's fine. I'll, I'll I'll sweep it under the proverbial rug. It's <laughs> bygones be bygones. Okay? Wonderful. He's actually a wonderful thing. So like you know. Wonderful thing. Yeah. Hmm. It, it, I know. I know you got locked, but I should technically still be held responsible for that because I made the box. I mean, true, but you didn't lock me in. <laughs> no, I had to give you air holes. Three. You did. <laughs> You know, maybe next time do like, you know, in rows of ten or something, you know. Do you want me to lock you in a box again? You can't anymore! He <laughs> <laughs> just like, starts, like, kipping up and starts, like, kicking his feet and, like, going around in circles, just elated. I wouldn't, but it sounded like you wanted me to, so I was just, again, just, you know. Okay, well, let's, yeah, so if you wouldn't mind coming with me to talk to my friends, because we just need, we need to help someone, and I, and I feel you understand what the need of help is. Of course, yeah. That, I am in your debt, my friend. Anything that you need, I am there one thousand percent for every goddamn pre feather you got on that little butt of yours. Well, wonderful. We get cupcakes later. Let's go. <laughs> cupcakes and <laughs> just like run so. We're getting soft tacos later. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> you and my friend now. We're getting soft tacos later. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. So eventually, you make your way. Uh, oh yeah. And- okay. Pardon? Candlefoot. Candlefoot. Wonderful. Do you have candles on your feet, though? Not currently. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's, a, it's a long story. It's kind of an obsession of mine, but, like, you know, I, in my spare time, I like to make my own candles. You know, it was kind of a little side business I was going on, and, you know, just to speed things up, I would put a candle on each toe just to, like, you know, be able to sort of sculpt them, uh, it wasn't the most favorable method to make candles. I would grab all that. But it but, sounds know. efficient. I know. I was going to start the candle foot business with, with somebody, but uh, it didn't look like it was in the cards. So We'll put it in the cards. I would very much like that. We will, we will find a way to put it in the cards. All right. Let's... So eventually you make your way uh, over to the stall where everyone is. Uh, just make a quick stealth check as you kind of look around. Uh, because you did, <laughs> you were trying, you were, you had basically like uh, distracted the guards and told you're going one way, poof, you were all gone. And now you're kind of walking in the open back in the carnival. Um, so I, I assume you're going to want to like try to sort of duck through the crowd and try to go unnoticed. So none of the hands be like, yo, where'd you go? Where'd the Kengu go? Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, make me a stealth check super quick. Please work for me. Six. Six. Yeah. On your way over to the stall, Mm -hmm. a couple witch light hands do clock you. Yeah. And see you. They're about 20, 25 feet uh, away. And they go to you like, hey! Hey, that was the one that got the Ken. That was one of the guys that got the Ken goo. Wait. Hey, hey! Hey, hey, bird fellow, over here, over here. And they start to like, try to get your attention. They start walking over towards you. Yeah. Uh Uh-oh, looks like Ubin got. Uh, I'll I'll deal with this, okay? I will find you later. Make some sort of sign if you need my help. I will be there. I'll I'll keep them at bay for as long as I can, okay? Go go find your friends. If you need to just make a signal in the sky, do something and I'll try to be there, okay? I shall make signal skies. Yes. Whatever you gotta do, my friend, I would be just run, hurry, go, scoot, okay, okay, get him, so, so but get out of here. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so Heavy starts going away as quickly as he can. And then you just sort of book it towards the stall, and you see kind of foot like turn around and hands up, and they uh, waddle over them and start doing their like mime thing. And, they're, and they're, like, he's like kind of getting in the way of mm-hmm. the two witch lights are coming in, kind of doing the uh, MC Hammer dance. Do, 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 do. Do 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 Like, oh, Candlefoot, get out of the way. We need to talk to that person. I got my voice back. I don't care. And you just like sort of hear this sort of muffled as you kind of go further and further away. Uh, make one more stealth check as you kind of make your way over the stall to make sure no one sees you going inside. You can do this at advantage because there's no hands currently in the area here. Are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> it landed on 16 and rolled to a four. So it's six. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Okay, so you're good. No one was able to clock you as you went inside. Don't count me up for stealth for anything, please. <laughs> <laughs> but you're able to kind of do like, because you are a fairly like colorful individual, fairly tall. Uh, it is a little bit hard for you to kind of go unnoticed, but with Canafote making a big scene, anyone who would have been in this area, kind of there, there's, at this point, there's no witch lights kind of running around. Most of them are over in the corner where you kind of made that distraction. Um, so Canafote's able to give you that little bit of extra time to kind of put yourself back into the stall. <laughs> and you guys just see Ebby <laughs> fall in while the rest of you are eating your cotton candy and mead and all various snacks. <laughs> oh, Ebby! Uh, oh, <laughs> it went wonderful. Oh, you want us to deal you in on some goblin pot? Pot? It's a game. I don't know what game. Okay. How did the mime thing go? <laughs> it went wonderful. They were so happy. Nice, 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 nice. All right, let's go beat up a, uh, something. Is that the plan? I don't but, know. What's the plan? The mines are gonna come find us later and help us out. They said they want they'll, they're here a hundred percent to work us. Sorry, correct myself. A thousand percent. Thousand percent. That's pretty. That's a lot of percent. It's definitely more than two. They were, but I think Lucy, you may need to apologize for locking them in. The <laughs> well, kind of foot. No, no, no. He's not. They're not here right now, are they? Fantastic. No, no. Candlefoot went, was, went, like they split up because the guards oh, rolled really a natural. The guards rolled a natural twenty to spot Ebby and Candlefoot walking down. Oh. So Candlefoot had to split off to just distract <sighs> them and uh, and uh, keep them busy while Ebby snuck away. So I have a question for the members of my party before we we go with Quincy's plan. Um, Ebby having fixed the mime's voice brought a lot of joy to him. So what if we continue to do good deeds or Ebby continue to do good deeds and then he was crowned monarch, we would then have a, a private meeting with uh, Witch and Light and then that's when we could do it. But they're not a butterfly. I don't know. Because that's like the that's the one event that uh, Kettlestream has had a difficulty um getting into so what if we were just a part of the show like like how lucifer and ebby were before oh that was fun it was fun it's a suggestion we it's it's mm. the long way around it but uh well i can say that i have been keeping tabs on you all since that dragon fight incident for a little while today then during this night i bet and you were kettle stream and another nudge at ebby he nudges him back <laughs> I don't know what it means, but it was fun. Does your friend always just repeat everything that everyone says? Uh, he's a very, very active listener. All right. Well, <laughs> I have been following you for quite some time today, and for the most part... You have all been doing your part around this carnival, helping people, though that lovely halfling couple that you helped earlier, so on and so forth. Saved that Cheers dragonfly to that I to the new kind of married couple on the engaged. You heard We're that. very good people. So <laughs> And that out of all of you who went and attacked the staff of said carnival, there is only one of you who didn't touch a single hair on anyone. Abby's good great. people. And and that's <laughs> coming from you. <laughs> it's true. Okay. The only thing I wanted to hurt was the bush. I've never seen anyone show such restraint and such kindness. Kindness is something that's always in everyone, no matter how far deep it is. Moss <laughs> <laughs> stays silent you. for this one. And this is why we love you, Abby. <laughs> as, as the mermaid Palasha, who resides as one of the attractions in the carnival, would say, you are an impossibility in an impossible universe. 
that, that sounds me. cute. Lucifer flicks one tiny tear away very quickly so before anyone sees it. Okay. See, so... I can be nice. Yes, you can be. Uh, so, what do we want to go with? Is is I mean, Ebby is pure-hearted, and I have no doubt that he. So, Ebby, do not come with us while we go beat up some people. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, There's a okay. boy that says, Yeah, I agree. <laughs> <laughs> This was like, yeah, I mean, Quincy are on top of this one. All right, cattle foot, cattle thing, cattle, cattle cat- stream, cattle stream, pow. <laughs> Who looks easier, Mr. Witch or Mr. Light? <sighs> Who can well, we, whose item can we get without causing a big issue? Well, as far as I've seen, how the how the monarch ceremony happens is that Mr. Witch is escorted by the big gray whiskered cat man who then escorts Mr. Witch with the crown that then chooses its recipient through a magical golden string while Mr. Light takes center stage and knights said person with their cane. Hmm. Mr. Witch usually looks at this event off to the side, but does have the very the crown. Kind, does have the crown. So he's but kind of like a bodyguard. Once somebody is picked, the crown leaves the vestige of the chest and they are simply just watching as an onlooker. There is a slight moment when the recipient is chosen that somebody could sneak behind Mr. Witch, cut the metal rope connected to the pocket watch, and snag it right from the pocket that it bears fruit. Abby goes to go eat some food while you guys talk. Or the more extravagant way seemingly is more your jam. I do have this. And you see uh, Kettle Stream take out this pouch, this sort of dull purple leather pouch and has a bit of darkened, blackened, glittery powder inside. This, my friends, is Twilight Sleep. Ooh, once what it do? Somebody, once someone is engulfed in this cloud, they fall asleep for a short time. I do that every night. Correct, mm. my fellow friend, but this one is done instantaneous. So there could be uh, that maybe something went wrong at the crowning of the monarch and people fell asleep, and at that point you could steal said cane. How much of that you got? Um, you've got a fair bit. Will it hurt anyone? It won't hurt anyone. Just knocks them out for a little bit. Got about two uses of it. So, Mr. Witch and Mr. Light really care about these objects of theirs, and do you think that's enough leverage over them to get them to talk about Zabilna? Mr. Witch needs that pocket watch to keep the carnival on schedule and on time. Without that watch, the chaos that would ensue even more so in these parts would be unbridled. The show would be in ruins, and that is something that they cannot let happen. I imagine (laughs) that's very important to both of them as well. That might just be enough way to out-leverage whoever's above them, as you so eloquently said earlier, Quincy. And they, above anyone, love to keep up appearances. Maybe we should... If you're in a public setting, there is no way that they would act awry or try any violence with people around. Has has it ever happened before? Has anyone stolen their watch? No, has the chaos ever broken out before? Like you say, it's just ever, you're saying chaos ensues when it doesn't go according to the time. But is that known from experience or a speculation? 
Well, have you ever tried to organize a wedding or any kind of dinner party <laughs> and you lose track of time and then it just becomes like a set of dominoes that falls over? Well, usually That's when bad. You, when new experiences happen, you just go with it and let's see what happens. But like in this situation, it sounds like something more than that. Well, more than that, my friend, from the conversation I heard from this hourglass coven, whatever they are, it seems like Mr. Witch and Mr. Wallight are taking orders from them, and I imagine that they'd be very upset if their carnival stopped working properly and on time. I like it. Let's put people to sleep. Can, can Abby do a history check or, or a counter check to see if they, he knows anything about that organization? Hourglass coven? Yeah. Yeah, the, well, no check needed. It's it's this is never heard about okay. this uh, place or people before. This is these are all new things that you're all hearing collectively. Okay. Okay. All right. But if you had to if you had to make any check, make ma'am, I'll give you a history check on the title of Hourglass Coven. You're gonna get nothing. I got nine. <clears throat> Nine, yeah, unfortunately, Hourglass Coven. Never heard that phrase before. You never heard that title before. I mean, Can the term coven could mean a couple things. It could be a literal interpretation, meaning like a coven of witches, or it could just be for show. It's just kind of hard to tell at this point. I really need better dice. <laughs> I need to stand this. I don't like the electrical one right now. <laughs> Lucifer, Lu Lucifer having like messed around with darker, darker groups before, would he have any interest in, in wanting to do a history check on that name by any chance having run across it before? Uh, sure. We make a history check as well. It's, it's not for once. Maybe he goes back to eating and really like humming along as he does. <laughs> <laughs> nope, just a 10. It's a 10. Yeah, so again... Hourglass Coven. Never heard that name before. Never been privy to any gangs or groups under that name. But for you, Lucy, Coven, hags have used covens before. Witches have used the term covens before. Uh, it's not an unheard of term, but which one it pertains to, if this is even the case, it's hard to tell. Roger to that. What time does this ceremony start? Uh, uh, it should be coming up pretty soon. I think the daylight outside is getting more and more less golden. Probably. Then we should go get ready. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. So wait, now who should we have, Miss, uh, Miss, Miss, uh, 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 wait, team? Kettle team. stream. Kettle stream. <laughs> <laughs> team boss Think team. of a kettle and then a stream and it works. Oh my god, Evie, yes! Thank you, Evie, well done. Um, Miss Kettlestream, uh, uh, we, we should have Miss Kettlestream um, hide as someone since they're looking out for uh, uh, a creature of her type. As is one of our teams, pokes Evie with the elbow. What? <laughs> what do you want me to do now? Since, since you are very good at taking on other personas and voices, we should choose who Kettlestream disguises herself as before we start this mission. I mean, Kettlestream, I don't know what Kettlestream's options are. I think we should just go. As as is. Oh, I not as it. is. Absolutely not as is. Right. We should just go, but I imagine the security is looking out for a... Kenku. A Kenku. Oh, they're probably looking for us too, aren't were they? How I could also this? just go... Oh, yes, by all means. So if we're going to sneak up on Mr. Witch and I'm guessing his bodyguard, the the whiskered guy, will be with The displacer him? beast. Yeah. yeah uh, it's okay, seemingly okay. Ken, uh, Kettle Stream has said that they come out with the displacer beast, like in this sort of pageantry sort of motion. And then the displacer beast kind of just sits down and lays down by their side. Okay, cool. So we should get uh, moving earlier and make sure that we handle things sooner. Right. Early. So uh, Moss is thinking that uh, there should be a code <laughs> phrase for between her, or I guess everyone and Kettlestream, where it's where it's like, "I love yarn," and then Kettlestream says, "Red's my favorite color," and that's when we pounce. So code word to drop the, the dust and to put everybody to sleep. Yes. 
Okay. Well, this will fact us, or is this going to put us to sleep? That's a great question. Very important. Uh, you might want to stand back. Uh, I won't. It doesn't have the biggest range of effect. It's kind of a one size fits all. I might be able to, if they're close together, maybe, but once they're separated, when the monarch is chosen, um, I'm only going to be able to really do it to one person. Okay, so then before sounds good. Sounds they separate, good. Kettle Stream, you'll be the one to uh, to make the first move, or we'll scout for you. Code word, code code phrase, and then we'll, we'll move in. I can just disguise myself as a normal purveyor of the carnival. I can just imitate somebody I've seen before with these wings, and I'm just there to see the show. Don't need to be smart. Okay, okay, we'll do that. All right. So we're on agreement? Yes. Let's get moving. As Lucifer spins and spins. We're going to knock out Mr. Witch. Yes. And his bodyguard. Take the watch. When he wakes up, he's going to realize he don't have the watch. He's going to panic, and we're going to... We have to be able to blackmail him without him panicking and... and In front of everybody. Oh, my God. (laughs) Here's the thing, though. This twilight dust isn't a cloud... It's just a dust that makes someone fall asleep. If you're not careful, everyone in the tent could see you. Uh, Which is where we have to be strategic, team. I think that one of you should sit as close as you can (coughs) to Mr. Witch. And when the monarch is being crowned, sneakily go behind and snip that chain and grab that watch. Not me. I can't sneak if sneaking is sneaking. I will. I sell this plus five. You sell this plus five. Okay. I volunteer. The crowning is quite a joyous ceremony. Everyone will be affixed on this happening, and that should give you just a slight edge to attempt this. And if anything goes awry or wrong, I've got the powder waiting. Glitter. Perfect. I Let's like do it. A team. For the builder. For the builder. For the French yes. fries. God damn it, it's finally gonna happen after all this goddamn time. Okay. Are you ready? Yes. Yes. Make sure you transform first and we'll be on our way. You see their feathers kind of drop and their tattered sort of blue uh, cloak um, dress that they were wearing just forms into this very how you toy uh, high elf in this sort of uh, little bat- black dress with high heels and big Ooh. pointed ears um, with high cheekbones, big elongated ears, long flowing red strawberry hair that kind of dangles down, um, wearing the sort of necklace in the form of a crow feather, that a charm that hangs down. How about this? That's super Moth cool. Moth blushes. Evie uh, uh, nudges Moss, uh, not knowing what it means. <laughs> yes, very good. Oh, yes, yes, well yes. Done. You're, yes. You're catching on, Evie. You're catching on. You look lovely. All right. You see their, their hands go like sort of uh, pat their back and, and angle out. From, uh, from their arm to signify them like creating the synthetic wings to show that they paid a ticket for the carnival. All right, I'm getting a little bit cramped in here. Let's do this thing, shall we? I'm going to climb out. All right. And it's with that, everyone, that we're going to take our break. Ooh, holy shit, that was so much chaos. <laughs> uh, all right, so we're going to take a short, just little five-minute break uh, just to refill the drinks, uh, stretch out the legs, and then when we return, oh, no. <laughs> hit the dogs out, uh, definitely, and then we will continue with the crowning of the Witch Light Monarch. So don't go away, everyone. We'll be right back. Woo! Woo!
and we're back. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Jackie didn't get the booby wings on in time. I didn't. <laughs> okay, I didn't. So y'all can watch me struggle. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So I got my tea all filled up here. So let's get back into part two of session three, Wild Beyond the Fishlight. So... With the party having captured Kettle Stream, the Kenku, and devised a plan to steal the watch from Mr. Witch during the crowning ceremony that would uh, determine who the Witchlight Monarch is for the Witchlight Carnival, the person who did the most good and serviced the carnival the most uh, during this entire days of events that's about to take place. Your plan is to go in there, join the festivities, and right when the monarch is about to be chosen, Moss is going to sneak off to the side, get behind Witch, steal that pocket watch, and use that to interrogate them, to tell them the entrance into Prismere. So, with all that, as uh, Kettlestream the Kenku used a sky self, transformed into a very elegant high elf uh, with a little black dress and high heels, one at a time, you exit <laughs> the uh, the uh, stall here, um, and I'll have you all roll just slight stealth checks once again as you're trying to pick the timing right here so no one sees you coming out of the stall. Seventeen. <laughs> Thirteen. There you go. It finally <laughs> happened. Twelve. Seventeen. Twelve. Seventeen. Thirteen. Thirteen. Yeah. Okay. I am an ordinary pigeon. Mm, <laughs> more than enough so you just pick your time as you see like you can kind of see a, a fair gathering of people starting to make their way towards the big top uh, tent you kind of just pick and choose to wait for some witch light hands to kind of walk by one after the other <laughs> so like a carnival car you all just come out of the uh, the hole inside of the stall and sort of prop yourself up make sure no one's looking at you dust yourself off and start making your way over to the entrance with Kettle Stream taking you by your side. You're kind of just sort of quickly get put yourself in a position where you're in a crowded space. So you're not easily picked out by any of the witch light hands. So you're kind of assassins creating this, just putting yourself very close to a lot of others um, as a big crowd sort of entering into the uh, big top. Nobody has taken the stage yet. There's nobody um, sort of dictating where everyone seats. There's just a crowd of people kind of funneling in back into the big top where you've been before. You all kind of go in and pick your seats. Uh, where in the big top would you like to be seated? Moss, I know you're going to probably want to go as far left as you can where that dressing room entrance is. Did you all just want to kind of sit right next to Moss or did you want to place yourself in various uh, Should we, we should all be spread out, right? Not too far apart because mm -hmm. it'll take us a while to get to the other person if it if anything does go wrong, I'd say maybe if Moss is in one position, we'd be like... Maybe like a half circle around her. Maybe, yeah. I'll be like a couple seats away. Maybe like... like the way that, sorry. Yeah, go ahead. Wait, no, the way on. that I see it is like there's the, like the flaps to like the, the dressing room and I'm on the floor, but there there are like seating, right? There's seating Like stadium rows. seating kind of going up. Yeah. yeah, so if you guys are at the top, at the back, technically you're the closest to me and can like have like downward attacks if need be, but you'll be close by without being yeah. like, too ambiguous. I like that. We'll go to the top of the, top cool. of the, top of it. Smart. Nosebleed seats. Okay. Nosebleeds. A very good vantage point to jump from. As you all start to funnel in, uh, the crowd is now getting a bit more grander the seats are filling up moss you sit all the way on the bottom uh on the bottom row way off to the left the rest of you kind of go up about five rows up to the very back and just kind of take your seats the three of you sitting next to each other kettle stream kind of sitting like a couple maybe run row up and three over from you moss kind of sitting close next to you in case they need to go into action but you all kind of take your seats and there's just a sort of the hushed murmur of the crowd as they're waiting for the events to take place now, as you wait, wait, and you wait. <laughs> I'm going to have Coco ready, kind of like under the seat, just kind of like have him built and just 
prepared. And suddenly, the sort of illuminated floating globules of light that are kind of floating around the center part of the tent start to float down to those three globules around the center pole and the big top. And the light starts to start to dim. This dull, radiant light is barely illuminating the big top area. And everyone going, shh, 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 it's about to start, it's about to start, it's about to start. And then one after the other, you see faint shadowy figures of various performers and witch light hands exit from the dressing room as they kind of cover the outer area of the big top tent, uh, kind of giving this half horseshoe formation as they wait for another to approach. And as the spectators wait, energy rising up feverishly, they look over and then they see two witchlight hands open up the entrance to the dressing room and they see a dull green, yellow, and pink light sort of emit from the back, illuminating the design of this very ornate chest that Mr. Witch is coming forward with this massive displacer beast striding across with these big sort of gray whiskers coming out of the sides and these enormous butterfly wings that take place on the sides of the displacer beast, almost like a big panther-like formation just looming beside them. And as Mr. Witch stands there, everyone looking like, oh, like a sort of a, a dull hush comes as Mr. Witch kind of takes position fairly close to you, Moss. You're about like 10 feet away from where they stand on the sides. And then the rest of the, of the helpers, the witch light hands, raise up the tent once more. And Mr. Witch comes out dancing and twirling his witch light cane around as everyone yeah! so it's a clap a bit harder and the witch light vein he taps on the ground twice and the sort of candy capes candy cane swirl of it starts to illuminate this is dull red hue and this light bright white hue kind of form forming as the two uh swirls kind of ignite like a lightsaber starts twisting it around doing this kind of rave light show with his cane and then goes boom boom Two loud stomps of the cane as everyone goes silent. As you all know, ladies and gentlemen and genders of all sizes, that this is the end of today's festivities of the Witchlight Carnival. And with that, we are proud to crown today's Witchlight Monarch. The ancient tradition we have done since we have started the Witchlight Carnival, picking out the absolute best who has supported you at this carnival today and who has shown the most joy and graciousness to everyone who has stepped foot at our grounds today. Without further ado, let's find out. Starts twirling the cane. Who that person is? Boom! And they stick the cane hard to the ground as it becomes taut. And this sort of dull golden light starts to form and ball around the top of the cane. And as Mr. Witch holds this illuminated box, this dull golden thread kind of bounces and starts to make its way towards the top of Mr. Light's cane. And as the vein bounces, or the, the thread bounces, it connects the top. And as the rest of the, the thread sort of exits the crown and sort of snakes its way to the top of the cane, the light becomes brighter. This swirling ball spinning and circling around as soon as that happens, you see and notice the sphere at the top <laughs> elevate off of the cane and begins to float. <laughs> oh, 
almost like a firelight. It moves around the crowd, seemingly has an intelligence, sort of hovering around someone as little kids look up and go, oh, 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 thinking it's them. Goes over to another elderly couple that have been sort of holding hands and looking on in the show as they kind of look at each other, go, oh, maybe it's us, maybe it's us, as the light kind of dangles around there and goes over. Moss, you're still standing by? Yep. Okay. And eventually, the light dances around, and this very elegant piano music kind of emanates all around you, almost like the light itself is doing this elegant ballerina dance, dancing along in the varied colorations of neon around the big top tent. You'll see Mr. Light just like conducting it like a symphony with the uh, with the piano playing in the background. And Mr. Light's kind of taken aback from the music and kind of just starts doing this bit of interpretive dance with the light kind of going from the crowd and going around them and swirling around. You kind of imagine like if this was a film, you'd see like various close-ups of like a beam, or, like a rod of light just swirling around a ballerina who's just kind of dancing and enjoying themselves. And it's kind of like one final performance to kind of close up the show with the staff and the various performers from the carnival all looking on to Mr. Light just doing their thing. And then suddenly the light <laughs> ignites and Mr. Light whisks it forward as the light careens the crowd, almost like a fireball. It glows like six times the size. And as it boom bursts, everyone goes, ah! Kind of looks back, kind of like a bit of a scare tactic, like a big firework as a loud bang emits across the crowd. And then all of a sudden, as everyone looks, Ebby, you kind of shield your eyes with your feathers and you notice that your body is floating up in the air from the audience as this radiant glow and glitter is just dancing around you as many like illuminated radiant butterflies are flapping all around you and your body is being floating towards the center stage next to Mr. Light. And it's at this point, Moss, that you know that the crowning has happened. Make your stealth check. <laughs> I'm a wizard. <laughs> <laughs> a 17. At 17. You start to make your way off to the side. And as soon as Ebby is chosen, everyone... <laughs> like clapping furiously that the monarch has been chosen and as this happens <laughs> I rolled disadvantage got a 17 and a 20 on the first rolls and got a 3 and a 7 on the second one so <laughs> good job <gasps> on the direction um, as everyone is just enthralled by the performative dance by the fireworks show from Ebby being floated towards the center stage you're able to kind of just just sneak off just a little bit, kind of going off the side of the rafters and doing kind of a U-turn around the displacer beast and just very quietly sneaking up to Witch, who's just standing there holding the case, very much enthralled by the performance, by the event that's happening, even though they've probably seen this a hundred times. There's something about this carnival that's just a bit magic to them. Otherwise, why would they own and run it all this time? Yeah. And Ebby, as... The glitter starts to subside and you float down. Mr. Light takes up the cane, radiant with red and white light. Kneel down, sir, so that I may knight thee, the witch light monarch. Uh, Abby, like, smiles and, like, under says, I am the butterfly. <laughs> <laughs> and kneels down. <laughs> For your good deeds this day and all that you have done to make everyone's experience here the most joyous and most excellent it could possibly be, I dub thee and puts his cane on one side. And as that happens, the butterflies that are kind of floating around you, one half makes a crown on your head and the other cane touches the other shoulder. The other butterflies connect to make a crown of illuminated radiant butterflies around your head as they rest upon your head and solidify into a golden crown of butterflies. I dub thee the witch light 
monarch. And everyone starts clapping furiously. Everyone gets up out of their seats. Few kids are a bit upset and sad, but their parents are like, it's okay. <laughs> you'll, do, you'll do better next time. <laughs> <laughs> And Mr. Witch is kind of looking on and has like a tiny bit of a tear out of his eye for his gruff exterior that he's shown all this time. There's something about this event that he just can't get enough of. And it's in that instant that you're able to kind of crawl towards his pocket where you saw him put in the watch. I need you to make me a sleight of hand check. I was waiting on this, okay. Abby, at this moment, just right puts his hands to his head like, I have my own personal kaleidoscope. That's a 21. Okay. Uh. So, you reach your hand inside. You see that they're distracted. The Displacer Beast is like a bit set forward. Their tail just sort of nearing your, um, the top of your foot. But there's the chain. Okay. And you know it's attached. And you've got to somehow disconnect it. I, I take my claw and break it off. Make me a s attack roll at advantage because they're distracted. This is just going to be you just... Okay. That's a nat 20. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. That's the first roll too. Let's go. <laughs> You take your claw, <laughs> elongates a couple inches, and one of the, you notice one of the steel links is just slightly ajar from the others, and you take your claw like a surgeon and just <laughs> take it out and just slowly back away and go back to your seat as Ebby has just been dubbed the Witchlight Monarch. You got the it. Pocket. You put the watch in your pocket and sit there. No one was the wiser. <laughs> and as this happens, the globules of light light back up and the room is illuminated once more. All right, everyone, that has been our carnival for today. Thank you all so very much for coming. We will see you all next time. Have a safe night home, everybody. Thank you so much. Thank you, and everyone cheers and claps as everyone starts to slowly get up and starts to leave. Uh, Ebby, you notice that the wings that you have suddenly have a pinkish neon hue to the outer sides of them. Okay. And you feel this sort of elation go through your feathers and your skin. You suddenly feel a little bit lighter than you had been before. Mm -hmm. Your flying speed is now an extra 20 feet. So oh you my have gosh, let's go. 70. 70 feet of flying. Oh my goodness. Wow. That's amazing. How do I edit that on my thing? <laughs> uh, you won't be able to edit that on the sheet. You'll just have to make a note that you have a couple charges to use this. Um, about three, I think. I'll recheck that. But yeah, you have about three charges to use the uh, extended um, flight feet. And then when it, the charges are expended, you, you, you're back to your normal flying speed. Oh my gosh, Abby! <laughs> so this is what a butterfly is. Wow, your booby wings look amazing. They're glowing. <laughs> <laughs> I want to keep an eye on Mr. Witch for mm -hmm. all this. I just want to keep an eye on him. Okay. So as you're keeping an eye on him, um, make me a perception check. All right. Or investigation, your choice. Wait, uh, would I have been able to hear that from Mo Moss? I don't know if you came over to us, but I'm just like silently cheering you on. Oh, okay. 16. Uh, 16. Okay, okay. So you uh, sort of look over, and as everyone's leaving, Mr. Witch is just like very satisfied for another good event kind of taking place. 
Mr. Light kind of twirling the cane is just like very satisfied of themselves. That could not have gone better if we tried. Good job, pal. Slaps Mr. Witch on the shoulders like, <laughs> indeed, indeed. Uh, I'll gather up the troops and let's have some celebratory. Mi- what the fuckity fuck with that jit job? <laughs> I want to kind of make my way next to Moss, just so that I'm next to her. And where's Ebby at the moment? Like, is he still on the center? Stage? So Ebby, you were on the you were on kind of center stage, and then Mr. Light kind of said, "Like, that's the show, everyone. Have a good night uh, home." Uh, and Mr. Light was walking back towards that backstage area, so you're free to kind of walk back towards them. Kind of like the movie's over, the audiences are all entering out of the theater, and you're kind of making your way towards Moss. And then uh, Quincy and uh, Lucy, you kind of come down the two rows and kind of all congregate next to Moss, where you're like 10 feet away from Mr. Witch, as he's looking around for his watch, so and he's not sure where it is. Abby's more like in a cheerful, little gleeful mo- mood, thinking that he understands what happened. Okay. Can Lucifer go sit closer to uh, uh, Kettle Stream, just so we have one point of yeah, contact? Yeah, so, so, so uh, she's there as well, as she's okay, cool. sort of still in her little back dress, like the crowd isn't gone yet. They're just slowly getting up and exiting. So there's still quite a few people here at this point. Okay. And Mr. Witch is just patting down his jacket. My watch, my watch, where's, the, where's my watch go? My watch, my watch. Did you eat my watch? And he looks down at the big, huge displacer beast. No, I didn't eat your goddamn watch. Ugh. And just gets up and starts to, the big lumbering panther-like figure starts to make their way back to the staff area. And Moss the- clocks this panther person. <laughs> Moss is secretly a bard. <laughs> I look and be. Oh my word. Watch out, Moto Moto. Like. <laughs> okay. So you give a bit of a side eye to the displacer beast uh, that walks away, uh, a la Mowgli kind of style, and then see Mr. Witch just freaking out on the watch, and then sees all of you as you're just all sort of sitting, sitting there looking at him as the crowd's slowly going away, and he immediately clocks at all of you with this smug smile on your face, and just kind of walks over to you and just kind of suddenly waving at people as they're leaving. Give it back right now. What do you know about Zabelna? Just tell you to get back and we'll have a conversation, okay? Mm, Just... No, 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 that's not the way this works. I think we can have a great conversation right here, Mr. Witch. (laughs) Wonderful show, Mr. Witch. And Mr. Light. Wonderful show. Fantastic. Who wants to see my crown? And besides getting more crowd people to start coming over by doing so. (laughs) 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 Monarch over here is just getting a bit ahead of them. What the fuck do you want to know, you little weasel? (laughs) How do we get to... uh... What's the name of the place? What have you done with Zabelna? Yes, what have you done with Zabelna? And what do you know of Prismia and how to get there? Um. Hmm. Um, indeed. The Prismia, that's where Zabelna, the, the Archfey, the patron of this carnival that inspired all these events, the Prismia, you just see him looking around, is where they're from. I don't think the hourglass coven is going to be happy with you if you don't start talking. Oh, did I say a bad word? The hourglass coven. He puts, he tries to put his hands. <laughs> Are those washed? Okay, okay, okay. Listen, listen. I'll take you wherever you want to go, okay? I'll take you wherever you want to go. Just say <laughs> fucking. Lucy, hurry. take over. No, good, so now where can we go have a nice little private chat about our desires and such? You want to put a bit in here? Fine. As long as I don't have to look at your goddamn faces anymore, I'll god fucking take you there if you promise to give me my goddamn watch back. Didn't you just close your eyes so you don't have to look at the faces? 
Yes. Uh, Lucifer goes and pats Evan back. Yes, very good, Evan. Exactly. Yes, you could listen to my bird friend here. <laughs> <laughs> Now, but quickly, 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 before we just go Mad Hatter and turn all tides against you, is there anything that we can, sincerely, now that you know what we're after, actually help you with? Is there any kind of, goodness gracious, is there any kind of, as Quincy so eloquently said, really? any higher power keeping you held down? I can't say anything here, okay? Great, so where, where can we go talk about all the good things? Just, uh, 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 just this way for the monarch and his special friends over this way. We are going in here with Mr. Witch. All of us, we are going in this particular tent following Mr. Witch. Safe and sound. <sighs> and it's, it's unharmed. Like, it's like nails <laughs> on a chalkboard, the look that he's giving you, just insult to injury, just like <laughs> sleeping in a bed of thumbtacks, just the most uncomfortable, that confidence, that uh, that bubbling, floating body, body that he has, that he kind of uses to boss everyone around with, is suddenly just hunched back, shoulders up, <sighs> trying so hard just to contain the anger within, like a steaming kettle, slowly just leads you out of the main big top tent and starts walking you down towards that left lane and takes you uh, towards the Hall of Illusions. Mm. Back where you had previously, or I should say Lucifer, I'd previously seen a little girl in a petticoat and a pig mask try to convince a certain halfling to come through the mirror and then had disappeared. Uh, As we approach, can Moss like, like firmly hold the, the pocket watch and dangle it over her mouth? No funny business. She eats like a goat. Ah. No, don't, don't, please. Ah. I start run. chewing on it. <laughs> <laughs> Talk about a quick snack. No fire, my snack. Don't, 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 no funny business, I swear. I won't do anything. Just don't eat my watch. I stay in my mouth until you ask, answer our question. <laughs> they make a barking sound because they're so direct. <laughs> 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 and they... Literally, like this is like if you took like the most expensive Rolex in a like in history and were just like dangling your mouth. He's just like, don't, no, I promise, I won't do anything. And um, you it's see, uh, <laughs> Candlefoot at the uh, at the ticket booth in front of the Hall of Illusions where they're kind of stationed. Uh, hey there, boss. Oh, uh, well, you, well, who are these people you you hanging out with? <laughs> <laughs> I've never seen them before in my life. That's I wake get him. Eddie's <laughs> really starting to get a bit confused and not getting the sarcasm. Oh no! And as Mr. Witch approaches, uh, oh, you're you're speaking again. Well, perfect. Then you can perfectly understand me when I tell you leave. We are taking over this hall for a private tour with the Witchlight Monarch that was just crowned. Oh, is that right? Um. I didn't know you could eat watches. No, no, don't pay attention to that. Uh, just, your, your day is done. The day is done. You may go back to your quarters, Candlefoot. It's, it's, it's fine. Just don't worry about it. Uh, uh, all right. Uh, ha have a good day, people I've never seen in my entire life. I will be going all out of way. Uh, uh, see, see, see you soon. It's more like a jawbreaker, I say as he leaves. <laughs> <laughs> I'd look so much like, but we saw him. Shh, okay, he still knows who we are. Oh. <laughs> and as, as uh, Mr. Uh, Witch enters into the Hall of Illusions, he's like, for the life of me, I'll never understand that one. Walks through the Hall of Illusions, and as Witch kind of guides you, moves you through the hall, I... Uh, can, can Lucifer stop him at the at the mirror that he saw that one uh, pig-masked girl in the, uh, 
in the reflection to ask. Yeah, about. so that that's a bit further in. When you go through sort of the first room in the Hall of Mirrors, uh, you when you entered, you noticed uh, the mirrors all showed you as young uh, and older depictions of your former self. And then it was after that section that you saw uh, the little girl. Um, so as you're kind of going through that first room, the reflections in the mirror no longer show you as older versions of yourselves. As you're going through the Hall of Illusions, you start to notice that the mirrors are showing you as gloomy, Shadar Kai children. Ooh. With your own youthful reflections falling behind. Soon they call you to a halt. And the mirrors now reflect everyone's true age. Mr. Witch addresses you in a hushed tone. Look, everything you seek and more lies beyond that mirror. And that is the mirror, Lucy, that you saw the young girl talking to the halflings. You're able to kind of halt before you get there. And as Mr. Witch continues, if you mean to step through, then stand in front of the glass and repeat this rhyme. Hither, thither, here and there, wander, yonder, show me where. Where does that go? Goes where you wanted to go, right? Prismia, isn't that what you've been doing all this for? Abby walks over to the mirror and looks in, into it. Okay. So you sort of look <laughs> in the mirror and you just see your own reflection. Okay, so then uh, Abby uh, repeats the, the rhyme of hither, feather, here and there, wander yonder, show me where. <laughs> Certainly the mirror starts to present this weird wave along its metallic glass-like reflection. The glass sort of material almost becomes metal-like as it starts to it almost comes liquefied. Mm. It starts to swirl in the mirror, blotting out your reflection. Um, so Abby has no fear in this moment, so he reaches his hand out to, uh, um, uh, Mr. Witch, and Offset says, you're coming with me. No, 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 I have to be, I have to stay here, there's no way, I did my part. How do we get back? So, you, oh, so you're saying this is a one-way type street? The, precisely, the, the portal is a one-way. You can arrive in Prismia, but you will have to find your own way back into the world once you're on the other side. Hmm. <laughs> Mr. Witch, yeah. you've only showed us a portal. You haven't really told us anything. Exactly. Yeah, yeah I was gonna say. You have questions. And that jawbreaker looks mighty tasty. It, it's actually really tasty. Um, anyway, what What, what, what does, does it want to know? Does the witch I can tell you? Moss, like, Moss, like, like, starts, like, Huh? I showed you where you wanted to go. This is the entrance to Prismere. What more do you want? We want to know your deal with with the hourglass coven. What do you know of them? What does it? What does it? What does the name mean to you? I'm going to have all of you make persuasion checks at advantage. Okay. Or intimidation checks. You're pretty much doing one of each. Did you say persuasion? Yes. Uh, you could do persuasion Ooh. or intimidation. I Mine's only an eight. Day, but... uh, I got a 19. Oh, let's go. Yeah, I got 11. 23. Ah. Without even needing an advantage. Ooh. Oh, advantage. Oh, it is advantage. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Nine. <Nice. laughs> 23 without even needing the second advantage roll. Well done. 
Oh, yeah. Those tough things. And that's, and that's intimidation. intimidation. Moss puts the whole thing in her mouth with the chain dangling out of her lips. <laughs> stop, 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 look. I'm afraid if I say anything about the hourglass coven, I might be murdered. So what if you... Well, we don't want that. Abby got excited when he heard the word, but said, why don't you write it down? Then you're not really saying anything. Mime it. Again, Abby, oh, what a time. <laughs> <laughs> Pass one to him. Let's say that this coven may or may not be the real owners of this carnival. Hmm. Interesting. And hmm. do you, would you say that they have a uh, a boot on your neck, uh, as to as to the pressure that they keep on you and Mister White, Mister Light? They keep a feel on the pulse of. of Why your would action. they have qualms with Zabilna then? Mm-hmm. Or was it a trade? Don't just stop! Just stop doing that. <laughs> What happens if the hourglass breaks? Mm. Thing. The watch breaks. <sighs> just. Is this water resistant? You are not sticking to your end of the deal. Look, I. There hasn't actually been a solid path been, to deal yet. We've been walking correct. before working with you. Okay, look, 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 look. Zabilna. It's true. Zabilna was the inspiration for this carnival from her. Domain of delight known as Prismia, Fey Wild Realm, which they are from. But the Hourglass Coven. <sighs> Look, I can't tell you, my, seriously, my life would be at risk and I may perish, but. So, protect the you. Hourglass Coven is through there. Yes, and they have a particular obsession about. Collecting secrets. <gasps> Full set, no thoughts are empty. They... Okay, final question for you. Who do you want, who sh- would we need to focus on taking out to save the day, to keep it simple? <laughs> <laughs> Look, I... If... <laughs> A, the Hourglass Coven may or may not have Zabilna captured in Prismia. Oh, we needed to know. Thank you very much, Mr. <laughs> Witch. That is very, very well, 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 Can I Who's please have my watch back, no, 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 no. Not, not quite. Who is the leader of the Hourglass Coven? I'm sure we'll find them just fine. Uh, hey, Moss, click the watch. Would you please oh. stop? I'm trying to and just my life was then placed up. You Uh-oh. said something that I don't like. You said you may not. That's not an answer. I just want to run a carnival. So I Abby want to need, run a carnival, but not right Abby, now. Abby you. needs clarity. Is this a bad <laughs> time to let you guys know I can't read time? It has to okay. be digital. Okay, look, look, look. There's no particular leader. They are they are daughters of Baba Yaga. They are a family. There's three of them. Really, that's all I can say. If I say they may be hearing through okay. these walls right now. You have been okay. a help. This Thank is why you should have written here's, this. Here's a question. So if we go and handle this, will that help you out as well? Wink if you're in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I don't like, I don't love the situation that me and Mr. Light are. In. We are just doing the best with what we can. We just want to keep running our carnival and making people happy. Okay, by so... some way of osmosis, we have to give people secrets to a coven of hags, and that's what we have to do to make sure that myself and my staff and my performers don't get murdered, okay? Oh, I see. It, it, it's okay. I see your stress, but 
you say secrets, like, is it any secrets or is it specific secrets? That's not really like a thing that should get you in trouble because it's something they want. I have secrets. So oh, here, yeah, this is all we're gonna ask. No, okay, so, okay, so, okay, so all we have to do is step through that mirror and we'll be there, correct? Yes. With, so okay. all I ask is you take care of this carnival in all your hands and especially- I'm gonna step through. Our friend, the, the candle foot for, for our friend, Ebby, and we'll handle the rest. Can a what for me? Well, he's gonna take care of candle foot for us and for you. So we can go handle this thing on the other side of the mirror. Okay. Is that fair for everyone? Is that helpful? I'm gone. Talk? I, I I just okay. Yeah, yeah, you didn't I'm, say the thing, Quincy. What thing? Oh, it, I thought okay, so. You're not gone. Do I have to say it again? I thought Abby already said it. I think so Abby said it, and, the, and the mirror thought. start to swirl. And then Quincy, when you were like, "I'm going," Abby <laughs> ah, <laughs> goes over to help him up. No. So, <laughs> I'm also satisfied with those answers. But what? What if this takes us just to anywhere in Prismere, not where we actually need to go in Prismere? I, Prismere is a domain. I think that's where we need to go at least to find who has invaded it. And But where do, in Prismere is it going to take us? That's what does, I mean. anyone, does anyone need to do a cer certain check to make sure that they feel this matter is not lying Oh, to insight? Them? Yes. Yeah. Uh, ooh. <gasps> I didn't realize that mine was... So, uh, 16. Fantastic. 16. He wants that watch back so fucking goddamn bad. He is, you are forcing him to tell shit he would never tell anyone other than maybe Mr. Light. But. Oh, lollipop. <laughs> please, you are endangering my lives and the lives of everyone who works here. Please. And he goes and starts to try and comfort Mr. Light. <laughs> I'm, I'm satisfied with these answers. Okay, be, final question. Before we give you your watch back and we walk through, is there anything you could suggest we take with us or do as added protection in this scenario that you've never tried before, but we're going to go do for you. You're welcome. Any suggestions as we go? Uh, uh, suggestions? Uh, Any weaknesses of the coven, mayhaps? All I know is that they, when they took over Prismere, they splintered the land to spread it amongst themselves equally. Each oh. one of the hourglass coven owns a particular part of Prismere and rules, mind the rule of three, future, present, past. Hmm. Okay. Oh. I like that. Okay. I think that lines up. Uh, Moss, Moss, like, wipes off whatever saliva's on there and just, like, Thank you. And Thank you, you're Mr. allowing Mr. him to take it back? Yeah, we got the answers. I'm satisfied. <sighs> Mr. Mr. Witch goes out for his hands to get the watch back. Here you go. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. Oh, God. Oh, now, take God. Care of, now take care of all your hands and the circus while we're gone, correct? And we'll see you in eight years, hopefully. And this is not what me and Mr. Light wanted for ourselves. This situation was thrusted upon us, and we've done the best we could for the safety of our staff, for our performers, and everyone who comes here. And that's all that we ask that you continue to do until we see you again. Can you remind Mr. Light that I still have that sigh I owe him? <laughs> sure. And I'll bring the performance back. If that watch broke, what would happen to you? This watch is magical. It, it allows for the carnival to run as it does, for all the events to take place, and for the magic of this area to continue carrying on. All right, well. If this Lucifer, watch would Lucifer. Break, the carnival would cease to exist. All right, well. Fantastic. You keep it safe. Lucifer walks up to the mirror to just as a test for to, uh, before the rest of the team goes. And he takes out both of his hand axes, prepares himself and says, hither, the, thither, here and there, wander, yonder, show me where. The mirror kind of ripples like dropping uh, an acorn into a lake. 
as soon as you say those words once more. Uh, is there a way that Lucifer can just like stick his head through just to see what's on the other side before pulling back to confirm whether or not it's a fight? I, know, I do know it's only a one-way street, so I suppose maybe not. <laughs> uh, as you sort of put your head through, there's just a blinding radiant light and what can sort of be described as like fog clovers, uh, fog clo- uh, cover, smoke, uh, mist, and then you poof, take your head back and you're back into the Hall of Illusions. Well, I couldn't see very much, but I say we go for it. I've gotten quite tired of the smell of, of, of the circus. No offense. Need some fresh air. Moss wants, to be, Moss wants to be the last person to leave. Okay, and he runs through and just jumps. Fantastic. <laughs> The Lucifer mission goes, of the mirror going to wobble as Abby goes through, <laughs> Lucifer goes through. So... Moss are left behind. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Witch. Do we'll I back. take my crown with me or no? Uh, yeah, you take the crown with you. Sweet. I have butterflies. <laughs> <laughs> I'll it's leave. Only, I'll go through. It's the only reason why Abby doesn't mind because he thinks there's actual butterflies sitting on his head. If he knew it was an object, he'd probably get rid of it. <laughs> okay. So, uh, Moss being the last one there. Uh, does she or have did to Quincy say- go through? Oh. Yeah, I do. Okay, and Quincy steps through. So saying, she has to also say the words, or is yeah. the okay? Mm-hmm. So, oh. do I repeat it, or do you want me to just say like she says says the phrase? Up to you. Uh, so, um, uh, Moss uh, says the phrase. Uh, Tither, feather, here and there, uh, wander, yonder, show me where. Yeah, right? Yep. So before she goes through, uh, Moss looks back at at uh, Mr. Witch and, and she says, I know you care deeply for the carnival and for the people in it, including the patrons. We will help find Zabilna, the inspiration for this carnival, and help you to be free once again. Please take care of everyone here. We will do Wait, do we have... Part. Do we have Kettle Stream with us? No. No. <sighs> All right. Okay. Bye. Morning, she, <laughs> she just goes in. <laughs> so as you say that to Mr. Witch before you jump in, he looks at you once more. Please believe me, we're not bad people. We I didn't know. want this for anyone. We were forced into a situation that we could not control. They're very, very powerful, and this carnival stands as a portal to this realm. It's one of the only ways you can enter it, and once the coven took it over, they saw it as a means to use it to get what they want. And I understand that, but you should also know my party is just as powerful. And she hops inside. As you're stepping through, you hear Witch say, Find the Alicorn and free the Dormant Queen at last. And you... Alicorn? Mm-hmm. And you step through the mirror. That D word? And as you step through, all four of you go through the mirror and this fog of cloud and mist envelops all of your senses and all of your vision as this radiant white light kind of shines through and it's very very thick and hard to see anything and as you're kind of taking steps further each footstep sounds like an empty echo in a in a mall each footstep just echoing till eventually the feet start to feel rock and granite under it to that echoing chamber sound suddenly sounds like gravel. And as you step out further and further and further, the fog kind of whisks past your face and you feel this sense of elevation as the fog sort of beams down and you find yourself standing at the edge of a raised and broken causeway under a hazy twilight sky. The causeway, which is built from pale stones that glow faintly from within, 
towers over the surrounding landscape, but large sections of it have crumbled away. The parts that remain in place are separated by large gaps where portions have collapsed. A fog-shrouded swamp spreads out below you in all directions, and up from its murk wafts the smell of rotting plants. Uh. Also rising from the swamp is the music of nature, a discordant symphony of croaking frogs, singing birds, and chirping crickets. As the fog lifts past your field of vision, you find yourself on this elongated, dilapidated run of concrete highway that breaks down in front of you. And if you look on the roll or on the uh, Twitch stream, you'll see a map of the first part of Prismere, known as Hither. Mm. And as you're taking these steps further forward, elevated highway in front of you, it's hard to make out the vastness of the area that you're in, but you feel different. You feel the area around you change. The humidity is different. The warmth from the carnival sort of changes to a slightly colder hue. You're definitely not on the material plane anymore. As you look around, the highway is probably around 20 feet wide and 100 feet above the swamp below you. And looking down, you see multiple mushrooms clinging to the lower half of each support pillar of this highway with the marshland below surrounding the pillars. And each of these mushrooms glowing in this neon blue light that kind of growing up from the swampland and curling up ever so slightly up the pillars of this highway. You kind of look over to the side and although the front of the highway is crumbled and broken down, you can see sort of off to the side as you look, you see foot and handholds that have kind of been carved off to the side of the pillars of the highway going down, giving you somewhat of a path to at least make your way down to the swamp below. But the fog is shrouded around you. You're not able to see very much farther past the highway, say for about 30 or so feet. But as you're just kind of taking in this translucent night sky, with multiple rainbow-like vestiges of fireflies and butterflies kind of floating around you, hearing that symphony of frogs, crickets, toads, the nightlife bellowing all around you. You look up and just see a galaxy full of stars with a Milky Way galaxy that looks like it's been painted by a paintbrush. And two moons sort of neck and neck beside each other, one more of a dark orangey hue, another one a brighter radiant hue and a third one sort of off to the side in this blood orange red coloration with a black crescent moon forming an eclipse off in the distance otherworldly almost alien like now as you're all standing there taking all this in who has the highest passive perception It'll be on your character sheets, kind of over to the left on the side there. Ooh, I have a 10. Passive perception? Passive perception. I have 14. 14. 14. 14. Well. (laughs) So for you, Lucy, taking all this in, this is something you've never seen before. You're just kind of swept by the beauty and the grandness of this very strange but elegant vestige of the Feywild. The three of you, though, kind of clock something as Lucy kind of goes over to the left side of the highway and is kind of just taking it all in. You all notice something off to the right. In the distant sky, you spot 
a great balloon made of patchwork material and you see it spin out of control as though punctured causing the wicker basket that hangs from it to swing wildly as the balloon starts to plunge out of sight and disappear into the fog approximately a mile away. Imagine a weather balloon fairly long distance away just and then disappearing to the fog. We'll send. Let's go. All right, we run. Okay. Lucy, so look you this way. are that way. You, you are currently uh, about a hundred feet up. Okay. Uh, on this highway, so. Oh, there's like a. Okay. Yeah, so there's a few ways you can get down. You can climb down. Uh, if you have any spells like spider climb or feather fall or anything similar to allow you to reach the ground safely, you could do that as well. Is it a hundred feet down? 100 feet down, correct. So I can fly 70 and then climb down 30. Uh, yes. I imagine. <clears throat> I so imagine I'm going to do, I'm gonna do a perception normal. check of immediate ground ring and below if I can see down. Okay. Yeah, so I described it earlier. When you look down, you can see that swampland, uh, a kind of marsh uh, surrounding the, the pillars of the highway stretch that you're on, and various illuminated mushrooms kind of climbing up the base of the pillars and sliding Aww. upwards in, in like a bright blue coloration. I, I was more meaning for uh, if, if it was like a safe climb down. Uh, yeah, so as I described earlier, there were footholds and sort of a hand placements mm. that looked like people had carved into the side of the highway, the pillar, to be able to climb down safely. Yeah. I was just saying that. That's all. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. This looks good. Okay. Start okay. climbing down. Can we do an athletics check to... Yeah, so for those who are sort of climbing down from the top part, Abby, you're going to just kind of float down 70 feet and then grab onto the, uh, the wall, so... All of you make uh, athletics checks for me, please. 11. Mm, 22. 20, 22. Wait, nice, Evan. Acrobatics? What, what did I get? No, 18, sorry. I read I read yours as 22 when it popped up. <laughs> so this is, this is athletics. Okay. Specific. Uh, that's fine. I got an 18. So 18. Uh, Jennings, you got? 22. 22. Abby got? 18. 18 and Quincy? 11. 11. So as the four of you kind of start to make your way down, Abby, you kind of get a head start, everyone, as you just kind of just jump off of the uh, highway and your feathers <laughs> come out and suddenly transform. Or I guess you're, are you using one of the charms to the, for the extra feet of flight? No, no, no. I'm just doing my regular 50. And okay, so 50. So half the way down, you see Abby just <laughs> plop off and her wings kind of yeah. expand. And just Mary Poppins just start to slowly float down. Uh, the other three of you start to get your foot in place and start to put your hands down and slowly make your way down. Quincy, last one to get on the side of the highway as Lucy and Ma start making their way down. You kind of put your foot in, go in to kind of put your hand down, but you slip uh -huh. and you start falling. You see Quincy. <laughs> fall past Moss and Lucy, I will give you two a chance to make a dexterity check to try to clamp on to uh, Quincy as they fall. Dexterity check, okay. Uh, 12. 12, so you're just starting to kind of come down, so Quincy, you're able to grab, grab on oh. to their hand, and just holding on to the side of the rock as you have Quincy's hand. I got a claws. All right, Quincy, make, make another athletic check <laughs> back onto the wall. That's a 13. Just oh. what you needed as Moss is able to just swing you kind of under Lucy onto the wall. And you grab onto some rocks that have a bit more of an indent and you latch on. Thank you. Hi. You're welcome. <laughs> okay. 
safely able to do that as you all start making your way down slowly. Ebby, you make your way about half the way, and so your wings are just too tired and they can't keep you up anymore, and you use your talons to climb onto the wall, so you also make uh, in that athletics check. Or did you make one already? I, I made one. That was the 18 one that I right. did. Right, so you're good yeah. to go. So you clamp, clamp on. Your talons are able to get more of a dig into the granite as you slowly start to make your way downward. And he starts like doing a little uh, hummy whistle as he's having a great time flying down right now. Just enjoying himself. As you reach down on the ground, Ebby, since you're the first one, you've got like half the distance on the your rest of your party. Yeah. Gently climb down to the thick, sort of icky, muddy swamp water down below. The light around you kind of illuminated by all the bioluminescent mushrooms clinging to the side of this granite pillar uh, that connects to the highway above. Mm -hmm. The sticky mud squelches beneath your feet. Tangled mangroves grow out of pools of rippling water, half hidden by the thick fog and purple bluish mushrooms clinging to rotting logs and stumps scattered throughout the marsh. Mm -hmm. Cricket that glow like fireflies chirp serenely before they're snatched out of the air by the tongues of hungry frogs. Ooh. And then as you are sort of taking all this in and you notice the frogs just <laughs> snatching various crickets out of the air, these pair of glowing eyes suddenly come out of the darkness to the periphery and this big winged giant crane just <laughs> flaps its wings and just careens above you and flies off into the distance kind of spooked by your presence a little bit and just flaps off into the distance how, 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 dark, how dark is it down around the swamp uh, it's sort of dimly lit with the illuminated mushrooms nearby, so it's not pitch black. Anyone with dark vision can can see no problem. Um, Fantastic. But as that caw, that call from the, the bird happens, the rest of you up top can kind of hear it and see this massive wingspan take place and this bird go off in the distance as you see Abby below you. Abby, you start to hear something else. Hmm. Don't as you start to hear... <laughs> Not at all what I was expecting. Uh, I know. You start to hear various beats of footprints. <laughs> you hear almost a group of beings singing nearby. Right. Yeah. And what you hear is this. With sticks and stones, we'll brick your nose, we'll beat you blind and steal your clothes, but none among us can compare to one wily, swift, and stand-up hair. Scoff, that's glorious, thief, notorious, his deeds are truly meritorious. With a wink and a grin, he'll show you his cunning, a flash on his scarf, he'll take you off running, quick as a bolt, his long scarf trailing, grasping, grasping, you'll end up failing, you'll pout, you'll moan, you'll huff, you'll sneer, thanks to a gun, long scarf, friggin' Prince of Prisma, and all of these, you just hear this sort of chant going on in the distance, and the uh, sudden burst of the crane sort of leaving, not that long after, you just hear a bunch of voices, you're like, the the voice kind of the, the singing kind of stops and you're like whoa whoa did you see that the wingspan that was incredible I think I, I think I think it came over from over there over there over there over there and then you suddenly see approaching you out of the fog six or so humanoid looking figures sort of at first until their images of shadow come into view and these elongated ears start to take shape and around six or so rabbit-looking folks start to approach you down below. Okay. And uh, as they come into view, you suddenly see them 
entering into your field of view and they're wearing they're one of them is riding a giant snail <laughs> as it's slithering around one of these rabbit folk is kind of holding it with a harness as five of them are kind of surrounding it from the other side and they all just kind of look at you for a moment as they see you the rest of you are sort of slowly climbing down almost about to make your way you're like 30 feet away from ebby as you see this collection of rabbit folk start to enter into ebby's view one of them riding a giant snail hello 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 there hello oh. uh, it's me or is, ever, is, is everyone so it's, it's just ebby for this for the moment you're still all climbing okay. down okay and he looks at me like, well, hi! And it's like his feathers go up when he gets really excited seeing these bunny things he's never seen before. <laughs> <laughs> You're a beautiful specimen, aren't you? Uh, 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 what? Hmm. Uh, well, thank you, though. <laughs> what do you think, lads? Looks like they might have something shiny on them. <laughs> I am... Oh, Jebek, Jebek, go on, go on, go on. No, I mean it. They look like they might be fancy of some kind. And they all just start to look at you very intently. Abby, where you at? Is it, is it you haven't seen us, have, right? Have, have uh, we noticed? So as you're going do down, you can, you can kind of, you're getting now uh, just above Abby's head uh, level as you start to climb down the side of the highway, this collection of rabbit folk in front of you, they can clearly see you. They're not blocked by the fog at all as you start coming down. Darn, I was gonna try and, and be stealthy. Oh, so they're just cheeky. Uh, if you want to try to be stealthy, as you're coming down, you can try to wrap yourself on the other end of the uh, mm. slab of highway if you want to sort of uh, make your way on the opposite side of the pillar that you're on. I want to. Can, can Lucifer do an athletics or acrobatics check to jump off early, land in front of Ebby in between Ebby and the rabbits with his two hand axes saying, well, I can guarantee you I have something shiny. Uh, okay, so Lucy, you want to jump off the pillar and land next to Ebby? Yes. Okay, and Moss, you want to sort of, as you notice these rabbit folk coming out of the mist and approaching Ebby, you like, oh, you want to careen yourself around the pillar? Yes. Okay, Quincy, what are you doing? Crawling down like normal, I'm just trying to survive here. <laughs> okay. And Ebby is not taking in any chance that these people mean any harm to him. So he's just like happily greeting them and being like, I am a shiny. And okay. I'm just like. Lucifer like rolled a 19. Uh, 19, okay. Uh, for the stealth, what did you get, Moss? Oh, I need 20 seconds to quickly do something. Uh, stealth. Okay. 18. Uh, 18. Yes, okay. plus five. Can I take a good buddy if you gotta go? Just 20 quick. seconds. Okay, and Quincy, you're just going down mm -hmm. normally? Yep. All right. So, Lucy, as you kind of see these rabbit folk approach Ebby, you just kind of hip up and do this very elegant backflip as you perfectly swan dive off, <laughs> land in the muck, <laughs> all this mud kind of splurts in all directions. That's Quincy. <laughs> Efficient. I make a mental note to, to get some wing boots. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but Moss, it doesn't look like you didn't see any any of the, uh, the Heron Gong look up or a clock that you snaked behind, so it looks like you might have uh, not been seen. Nice. So as you say that, you see, that's the race of the rabbit folk, yeah. Heron gone, I want to write that down. That's cool. And as yeah, one of- Lucifer lands and goes, oh no, but I can guarantee you that I have something shiny. I'm just holding the axes just in case they were trying to threaten Evie. I want to make sure that they know he's not to be threatened. Well, seems like we've got ourselves in a little predicament here, eh? Only if you make it one. Sorry, I'm back. I was muted. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> um, Abby, when, he saw it, when they said that, I was like, there's no predicament. Why are we getting violent? 
Look, 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 violent. Look. <laughs> we don't have to get violent at all there, my friends. My name is Jebek. I'm the leader of this... Tr what the fuck is that? <laughs> we get violent. I've been waiting for this. I've never seen that bird before. <laughs> <laughs> Um, make an intimidation check, Quincy. That's a nat one. <laughs> so you go to, it looks really like elegant, like fearful, oh God. this sort of dull orange hue collects in uh, the in your metal griffin's mouth. That's right. We're not here to fuck up. Uh. It just starts to click and the orange hue just goes away. And it looks oh. like it's malfunctioning for a minute. A moment. One second. One second. Lots of tools and just kind of start start tweaking with it and kind of step back behind Lucy. A couple <laughs> nuts and bolts just sort of vomit out of Griffin's mouth. <laughs> no, no, I need that. I need that. Oh, sorry, sorry. Sorry. Hang on. <laughs> right. Sorry, <Zedek. laughs> Continue. Con continue your introduction. Now, look, look, look. We don't want anything shiny of value from you. All that would be preposterous. And Jebek pulls out this uh, stoppered gourd that has a golden knob at the top. All we would like from you seemingly new visitors to this land is just a few measly, harmless feelings of delight. No harm in that, right? Hey, again? I don't like the way you said that. Well, what what me and my <laughs> fellow <laughs> herring yeah. adjectives of like what harm. me and my fellow herring gog friends here would like is just for you to give up a happy memory uh, that we oh. can just take back to our. Uh, hmm. I did an insight check, and it was a nat twenty. Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> They'll end up on 24. <laughs> Good job. Um, so as you're, so what are you insight checking specifically? I want to, I, I, the, so basically at this point, I did not like the way the words were said. And so I'm trying to understand their um, motive behind it. And in that same continual step, you know, like if I know their motive behind it, well, I would then piece together what losing this would be. Because I don't, because Abby doesn't believe in losing moments. So essentially, what they're saying is they're like, it looks like they look fancy. Maybe they got something shiny on you to kind of like spook you a bit, kind of intimidate you a little bit. And then Lucy does a swan dive backdrop. <laughs> well, I've got something shiny. And Quincy tries to sh present the very scary <laughs> gun that malfunctions and nuts and bolts kind of spurt out. Um, and then Jebek, the seemingly leader of this troop says ah, nah, 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 let's, this is getting out of hand look 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 we don't actually want anything shiny we just require something a bit more unique just give us and pulls out that gourd just give us a happy memory that's all we require something to take back to our lord and save you long scoff and we will be out of your hair no time and you doing that insight check uh ebby You've already been privy to the idea that someone or something can steal memories, can take desires from you, can take treasured memories from your past and keep it as their own. Mm. And that's not something you were willing to give or even entertain mm. giving. So at first, you know, maybe if someone said this to you, you'd be like, yeah, sure, whatever, but to the history, especially with the carnival for all four of you, that feeling like you've always had your most treasured desire always out of arm's reach, feeling like the carnival was connected in some way. Now, Mr. Witch, having said outright, the, the hourglass coven loves to steal secrets, it was out of our hands. There are dots connecting here. And this is you, Abby, standing your ground. Yeah. Against this. So, um, so Abby, uh, steps forward in front of, uh, Lucy and, uh, <laughs> and, um, 
in his his cheerful demeanor is still there, but more becomes very solemn as he looks at him and openly says, with every ounce of every being between mine and everyone else's, no and no will you have this moment of memory. Okay. Make an intimidation check. Thirteen. Thirteen. So you go over to them. You will not have this memory. You can see the Heron Gongs are all carrying uh, various clubs uh, by their sides and like <sighs> slings in their sash that appear to be almost like um, slingshots of sorts. Let Quincy and I at him. And they look at you. <sighs> well, <laughs> as Jebek kind of snaps their neck to and fro. I guess we're gonna have to do this the hard way. Moth pounces. Yes. Moth pounces. And the Heron Gong starts taking out their clubs. What do you say, boys? Let's have a little bit of fun, shall Fantastic. we? Yes, Quincy. Moth and we find something it is here, everyone, that we're gonna have to end the stream. Oh, Unfortunately. Can we say for the record that Moss is mid pounce, please? Mid pounce, yes, okay. of course. It's just <laughs> that the fight might put us past our our end time, and yeah. I wouldn't try to stay it too much longer than you would want. So let I'm us really end it there, <laughs> and we'll pick up from here in two weeks' really time uh, for for session four of Wild Beyond the Witchlight, <laughs> going into combat with a group of Herringog, one riding a giant snail in a swamp land. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I Thank you guys all. Oh, as I said, I had a feeling that there was going to be a fight, and there hasn't really been like a fight. So I was like, you know what? Let's let let's let morals go out here. And so, <laughs> so I mean, it's just like, no. Yeah, your first your first official fight in the campaign so far. So, oh, actually, no, the bugbear. You had that fight. That's the second <laughs> first fight. Then Oops. I'm more I'm more of a fair fight, let's say, than Oops. three on one. Uh, <laughs> But uh, yeah, thank you all so very much for showing up oh. for tonight's uh, session of Wild Beyond the Witchlight. Uh, what was that, Shane? Did did that short rest return any of our um, use? So of you didn't take a short rest. Uh, you chose to go over to help out uh, the mime as they all took the time to rest and, and, and hang out there for the hour. So That's true. Unfortunately, uh, that did not take place. But... We will come back here in two weeks' time, everybody. So not next Tuesday, but the following Tuesday. Come and visit us for uh, session four of Wild Beyond the Witchlight as these crazy mother effers fight against rabbit folk and a giant snail. Uh, <laughs> tune in next Monday and every Monday for Beyond the Realms d d my homebrew campaign that I've been doing for almost a year and a half. Uh, it is getting into the final arc. It is epic, fantastic, and we would love for you to come check it out. Also, every other Tuesday, uh, if players are able to, we do uh, the Feyli D&D campaign, another homebrewed story here guided by the great co-creator of the channel, Jordy Rose, and I get to be a player playing my three-year running uh, PC, Les Paul of the Triton Rest. Um, so... Come and check out those streams when you can. Another big shout out to our brand sponsors, uh, Crit Kit and C4 Labs. Make sure if you want to get some amazing dice at a very good price, uh, type in Dice Cream 15 at your checkout for 15% off and go check out those Kickstarters for both uh, companies. They really are effing amazing. So thank you all very much. We love you. Wash your hands. Stay safe. And we will see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.